Hello, everybody. Welcome to A2K. I could say part two, but that it, we are so far from part two at this point. This is the second week in a row now we've done one of these shows, but this is an ongoing process as you've been listening in to previous discussions Kara and I have been having. This is, this is just the natural progression of our whole journey into what A2K really is all about. So without further ado, just want to introduce Kara. Kara, how are you today? I'm so amazing. Hello, everyone. So happy that you are tuning in to this amazing April 11, 2019 broadcast. Yeah, as we were just discussing, Kara, you said this is a very auspicious day. And the, not only did the whole Julian Assange thing start to go down, which all has been building up this thing, this event. Oh, they're going to get him. He's going to come there. The whole thing has been building up. So this is sort of a big day for that, obviously. But also, what was it yesterday? The first ever photograph of a black hole was publicly disclosed to people. Yeah, allegedly it was a black hole. Right. Allegedly, <laughs> lots of air quotes going on here. First ever air quotes, uh, photographs, air you know. Oh, and it happened to be a blurry picture, not like they have any higher resolution photos. Like there's no, there's no way. <laughs> oh, man. oh, man. I, I watched um, a couple of, like, YouTube channels that I subscribe to, and I watched their take on it, and it, oh, my gosh, I just couldn't stop laughing. Yeah, well, I guess in in a way, they must, a lot of these big events that, happen in a public way seem to be timed very interestingly don't they with the fact that this julian assange thing has been oh, like on the, the very next day happened. yeah yeah on the very next day and it's it's a lot of discussion about oh that well this was a distraction from that sometimes things will happen in the media to distract from other things that people should be paying attention to and vice versa yeah. sometimes things are really happening that the, they're, they're talking about in the media that no one's paying attention to because of other things that are happening like yeah. like storms or things of that nature yeah so it's it's amazing i don't know what the uh, solution to it is and maybe it's not as relevant what the solution or answer is but it sure is interesting it's interesting and it really does remind me of the phrase the world is a stage and it is this is no different and so i do completely agree with you it's like which one is the real one uh, the real thing we should be paying attention to what is the distraction um, you know, they've been leading up also to the, the black hole photo. Um, like we're the first humans to see a black hole. <laughs> <laughs> here it is, everybody. We just, we just took this picture last week, <laughs> and here it is now. We, it took us all this time to finally see it. Oh, man. Hilarious. Hilarious uh, that, that it happens. And it's, it's funny because there seems to be a growing community of people that are just so skeptical of all of this stuff. And I yeah, think that's a, basically. yeah. And it's a, it's like a double edged sword in a way. It's a blessing and a curse. I think skepticism is very important to question things of that, all that at the same time, there seems to be a, a, a what's the word? It's not, it's not a big deal. It just doesn't seem to be a big deal. Like they release the black hole and it's like, yeah, just, you know, okay, next. Look, yeah. Okay, always say we saw that, moving on. Yeah. They'll release stuff that just, it just when, it, when it's released, it's, it doesn't make the headlines or, do, or it doesn't, it's not received in the way that you would think it would be. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, I wonder what, it, Which, how that all works by out. By the way, I must say then, that means that the mass population is only growing in their consciousness because whether or not that really is a black hole or not, um, I think that people are really tired of this big fanfare of things. Um, you know, it, if, if, a, you know, kind of a, maybe even a, like a lower level scientist came out and said guys oh my gosh look what i just found i think it would have been received a lot different as opposed to them hyping it up like it's some sort of grammy awards um you know michio akaku saying like guys 
the human race is going to see a photo on this day. You know, so it's very, uh, I think people are getting tired of this. Just, it's, it uh, came off as very inauthentic and um, very contrived. And, um, you know, just it being on 410, which the backwards of that is 104. And as you know, 104 is a very monumental uh, symbol that uh, certain individuals, and I see that because you and I know who we're talking about, but oh my goodness, I don't want this YouTube to get banned or anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think they've got bigger fish to fry, but <laughs> then again, would we not be so vindicated if they were to ban the video yeah, because of something? Like <laughs> I mean, that's why I think it's so cool that PewDiePie is moving on to D Live now, which I think is also mon a monumental thing that's happening. I mean, he has like 97 million followers. Um, and YouTube is getting very like ridiculous in who they choose to ban or who they choose to demonetize, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't know. I just feel there's just something so, so fishy about this all. Like I feel like I'm living a dream. I'm reliving a dream that I've had for so long. And I keep thinking like, okay, what do I need to do to basically wake up what do i need to do to wake up because we all collectively all of us need to wake up from this reality and like we said on our on last week's show we were talking about people being their own creators and i really think that all of this stuff all the shenanigans all of the you know whatever is going on at the college admission scandal and all of that stuff i really think it's just it's contrived to make us forget that we create the future. Nothing is set in stone right now. We have the ability every single moment to create either to create destruction or to create creation. And, you know, I, um, the whole day, actually, all I've been doing is researching this line of history that I think is very valid and something in the last three days has come through to me so clear, Alex, and you and I have been talking about this for probably 11 years now, which is, if you do not know history, you are doomed to repeat it. And I think, you know, especially living in a simulation as we are, as we all know, and as timelines can shift, and, you know, you could choose a different timeline than I'm on, and, you know, just all the shenanigans that can happen um, in quantum physics, um, it is imperative that every human being understand history. Yeah. I, uh, yes, that is something we've been talking about for quite some time. Yeah. Uh, to take it even a step further with how if we don't remember the past, we are doomed to repeat it. Yeah. That's that's so that's so amazing because or no it's if we don't let's say it's if we don't learn from the past we're doomed to repeat yeah, it but, you yeah. know backtracking a little bit if we don't if we don't even remember the past mm -hmm. then how are we expected to learn from anything and that's been a huge problem with our culture on this planet as far as the thousand a few thousand years of recorded history I mean we're, we're we it's almost like we started from scratch and it was just we're kind of we've been making stuff up the whole time but that that in itself is the mistake that's the misperception of our past because we do come from a long legacy of creation and evolution simultaneously happening that we we we've, we're in a, as I would I would quote Graham Hancock saying that we're in a, a, a species with amnesia that and, and the thing is too to bring it back to the more uh, local uh, political maybe contrived sense of the media and all that stuff a lot of people are feeling so separate let's just say that they they have their personal agendas and they have their own reasons for doing things that a lot of times are not in the best interests of the greater good or the greater whole of things. So there are those people with, let's say, greedy interests. And I'm, it's like, this is moving away from that, that mentality that there's the bad guys out there that just want to manipulate and control everything. And sure, that is a perception. But if you take into consideration that we are this, spe this species with amnesia, that just, just how 
somebody gets hit over the head and they forget who they are or some go through some sort of traumatic injury there there's a recovery process that seems to happen with that and i think that we've been going through this recovery process for quite some time but maybe through as you would say uh s-t-e-m right science technology engineering, uh, engineering and math yeah. maybe through the i would say maybe through the the more bigger deeper influx of that type of stuff going on this recovery process of our own memory has been accelerating a lot you can see that exponential rise up the on every chart whether it's climate or technology or population whatever it is this huge spike that's happening it's we're going through that evolution really fast right now and we're starting to that whole black and white narrative where there's creation and destruction is that that very definitive hard line between the two seems to be blending and i kind of like what you said i really like what you said before it's the 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 we're either creating destruction or we're creating creation either way it's all creation mm -hmm. so that line is is fading away real quick and uh I, it's it's an amazing experience to see it's like you can never really it used to be so predictable now things are becoming less predictable in that way. It's like, oh, well, all the time, there's so many timelines. If you can think that there's at least one timeline for every person on the planet, and then there are greater, more encompassing timelines for greater populations of people, and then some of these timelines are shifting, i.e. The, the Mandela effect. Mm -hmm. You got this like big, discont there's been a lot of discontinuity in our consciousness for so long, but now things are starting to converge. And, I, the, and the last thing I'll say here is that it, it reminds me of a, a, like a guitar where you have six strings on a guitar and there's a little spot for each string on the guitar and each string has its own density, i.e. the d density of dimensions. And then each one has its own frequency, mm -hmm. but then they also have to be tuned properly. So there's that whole thing of a guitar working, but it's almost like if, if you ever tried to put more than one string where one string should be, it's, it's a mess. It sounds terrible. The string keeps flopping around. It's like we've had too many strings on one guitar, let alone the fact that it's been out of tune. Now it's like we're starting to put the right amount, this right amount of strings are coming onto the, the guitar. And we're really getting warming up to the tuning part. So it's like, and what's the purpose? So we can play the guitar. So we can have this coherent sounding symphony of, of frequencies. So yeah, I guess I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> a great song, you know, a song of, of true harmony and a song of true coherence. And it's so funny, too, that, um, by the way, I really would like to switch from, say, Mandela effect to quantum CERN effect because I'm getting really cranky of people, like, associating um, Mandela and stuff. Like, you know, let's get real on science. Let's get real about that. You know, the thing is, this is why I love literally our our conversations since the beginning of time. Just kidding. Since the beginning of when we met, we have always included movies in our conversation. And one of the biggest things, and the, I feel like I'm going off on a tangent, but let's just go there. Yeah, it's okay. It's a podcast. <laughs> That's the nature of this stuff. Let's let's tangent it up. Let's just go there. Um, <laughs> one of the things that I one of the movies that has seriously been on my agenda and on my mind and in my periphery um, is Deja Vu with Denzel Washington. Mm. And legit, Alex, holy cannoli, it's like a certain handbook, okay? Like, not only does the technology that they are utilizing look identical to CERN, but then they're even able to go back in time and modify timelines. So that's why I like to call it the, the CERN quantum effect and not Mandela effect, because that just, that just recognizes one spot in time that was changed that doesn't really recognize or give a true nature of like, holy cannoli, like things are seriously yeah. getting switched out. And and what's so wild about that is because some populations remember a certain thing and then some people remember another thing, which is kind of very similar to your um, analogy of the strings of a guitar. So they're like putting multiple strings of the guitar in, in the place of where one string needs to be. 
Yeah. And that is specifically if we're, if we're going full circle on what we just said, which is if you fail to learn from history or you fail to know the true history, you are doomed to repeat the mistakes of the past. And in terms of, you know, each individual actually knowing the truth or even being able to be completely aware of what happened in the history or in the past to learn from it to move forward, CERN is like creating pandemonium chaos, which again goes to um, creating destruction. And I want to highlight too that, you know, you and I talked about this, that creation or like life and death are a part of creation. So I don't want people to think destruction just equals death. Uh, what I truly mean of creating destruction is kind of like creating destruction within the atom, A-T-O-M. And that's really what I mean when I say there is a force of individuals who do. They have an agenda. They, they actually want to break the atom. They're, they hate the atom, which is, you know, mind-boggling to me because the science behind the atom is just fascinating. Um, so, yeah, I really wanted to, to make that distinction that, we, you know, you and I start using certain quantum effect and that we really distinguish that death is not necessarily, you know, evil. I mean, think of how, again, how the pine cone is the pine tree has to go through, like, crazy fire in order for the new seeds to be released. So again, creation includes this amazing death process, which is separate from destruction. Love it. That's, yeah, I, yeah that's, <laughs> you said it. That's exactly how, I mean, we've been talking about this for so long. Right? That, yeah. that, is, that is, that is the way I see things as well. And a few things came up as we we're talking about this. Okay. When I first brought, uh, when, we, when I even first mentioned the Mandela effect, as we've originally, let's say, historically called it. Yeah. Uh, my mind always, every time I go to say that, my mind always tries to say the mandala effect. I know, isn't that so funny? Mine too. Right, and uh, what a coincidence, right? So like, and what is a mandala? A mandala is a symbolic representation of the entire universe that embodies both creation and destruction as one thing. And, and the thing is that destruction is the most important part because you, when you wit, I think we might have talked about this last time, but let's say it again that if you go as a spectator to see these monks praying and manifesting and working on this mandala, this wonderful work of art, really. Yeah, with the sand, the colored sand, right? But right, right, and they they very pre very precise. Takes a lot of time to really get the the practice down to do that and the prayers because they're not just making an art thing they have to no. memorize it all they're not going from a handbook it's very ceremonial extremely ceremonial and it's, as a spectator you would go to see something like that and they wipe it away at the end just there's there's almost this this as a spectator that's not really truly read in let's just say read into the the nature of this whole birth and yeah, just someone death. running off the street yeah, exactly. Coming in and looking at this, you watch it, watch them wipe away the mandala and you think to yourself, no, 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 no. That's beautiful. Let's keep it. Just imagine if you go to some museum or wherever in the Louvre in France and you see them just, just taking the Mona Lisa and just r erasing it at that moment. You're like, no, 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 don't erase it. We want to look at it. And it's like, it, it, there's that, that, that need to want to keep keep that creation around, but the 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 wiping it away is just as important, if not maybe more important, than the whole creation part because it reminds us of the temporal nature of life that this whole thing is temporary and that we should, for lack of a better expression, not hold on to things so with such a death grip, you know, ironically, no pun intended. But I think that's I think that's interesting that the Mandela. I always try to con we use the Mandela effect, say Mandela effect. So, but back to your original point, I agree with you very much with discerning discerning CERN the ah, Mandela, so right? The man. It's funny how words work, right? The that this is a quantum effect, a quantum yeah. CERN effect. Mm -hmm. And uh, another thing that came up that as just another little tangent in relation to CERN. Now, CERN is this 
on the ground a circle that goes in this big tube where they can control subatomic particles and get them going really fast and have them collide with each other to re in a, at least as far as the public is concerned to recreate the conditions of the big bang now there is a lot of suspicion around the the actual motivation for why they build this thing and there's definitely a lot of questions just like when they were developing the atomic weapons there was a really strong concern that when they detonated a nuclear weapon for the first time yeah concern like, they're, they're really speaking through me right now but they uh, yeah they, that they were concerned back in the 40s when they were going to ignite a nuclear have a nuclear reaction that it would cause a chain reaction and then just cause the entire surface of the earth to incinerate. Now that did not happen per se, but there, when it, they, there was a, there is a general approach to this, that if you're affecting matter or energy on that level, that mic, that subatomic or quantum level, that you're going to not just affect this stuff down here that you're doing in this little control. Yeah, butterfly effect. Exactly, the butterfly effect. It's going to ripple out into the bigger picture. So I think more so with CERN than the atomic detonations of the 40s, 50s and onward, which there were over a thousand nuclear weapons detonated in the Southwest United States alone. I which know. Is, Have you seen that map where legit, it, it's like a timeline map and then it's like boom, 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 boom. And it's like, boom, 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 boom. like yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's, and, and you know, it's it's amazing because people were so afraid. Oh my God, the nuclear war is coming. The world's gonna they're gonna ignite all these. They already did. Yeah. We did. We the nuclear war was on nature itself. Yeah, Just, because guess what? They did a lot of those underneath the ocean. Yes, they did. They did. I think even more underwater. That's and what the movie. That, which is so bizarre. Yes, and that back to James Cameron again. That's exactly what the director's cut of the movie The Abyss was all about. The big conflict at the end was that the aliens underwater were ready to wipe out the human race because they were detonating all these nuclear weapons underwater. It's like, you guys are irresponsible and destroying our habitat. Why shouldn't we destroy you? You're a destructive race. And then Ed Harris comes in and convinces them that, hey, it's not all bad. Look, we got that, some people out there. So yeah. of, of course, you know. And, and, you want to know why it's so funny? Because Westworld. <laughs> right. Westworld and The Truman Show. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I totally forgot about that. Yes. Oh yes. I love Ed Harris. A great yeah, actor. I, you know, that's literally, though, one, one, um, one and two can of the future. We're literally going to link. Uh, link actors because there's so much messages in the the role that one person plays like so like yes. Ed Harris and we'll go through all yes. of the roles whether it's Truman Show whether it's Westworld I mean there is literally so much data just in yeah. that alone have you that reminds me have you seen uh, are you familiar with the Q conspiracy the QAnon yes, conspiracy I am. Okay. Um, when it when I first heard about it two years ago, I legit was like full force head into it. I was working with someone who was working, who was like super excited about Tyler, which is um, Tyler came out of Texas, who was actually one of the first AIs. Uh, no, I'm I'm like the thing is though, Alex. I have to say because have you seen the movie Q? Which go, which actually um, talks about the the god. Oh, and I'm probably gonna like not say this right, so please correct me. The Aztec god. That's Q Quetzalcoatl. Oh, Quetz Quetzalcoatl. Yeah. 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 The fed the feathered serpent guy. Yeah. Yes. So I I was watching a YouTube video the other night that link actually linked that Quetzalcoatl, however you pronounce it, to this movie Q who is a feathered serpent who demanded child sacrifice, then back to this, you know, QAnon, I literally went into like a mind warp. I was like, what is going yeah. on? Oh well, that, that, that leads to why I brought up Q in the first place. And that, and that would be an interesting, we can continue. There, the, there is a whole thing about Q. I'm, 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 I'm sort of detached from the, I'm not a Q supporter or full believer of that conspiracy per se, because there seems to be, a lot of, I mean, it gets highly politicized. It's probably the most politicized 
mainstream conspiracy that's ever come out on the news. And, and but that, that's a another story there. But the reason I brought up Q is because <laughs> there, when we we're just talking about making that map of all the movies and connecting all the dots, have you seen the Q map? Yes, I have. So just like we need to make one of those for movies with all the actors and the movies and all draw the lines. I mean, that thing is really cool to look at, but it's also kind of like, what the fuck? Where's the beginning? Well, honestly, it's, okay, yeah, it's cool to look at, but I'm totally with you. I'm not like, okay, so I was a big fan of Q at the beginning. And I'm not saying I'm not now, but I am, you know, again, I literally will give this disclaimer every single A2K show. I, I have reserved my yes, opinion. Yes, yes. Based on new information. <laughs> yes. Write that down again, lawyers. We need to stipulate that every podcast. Yeah, I literally think we should have it um, posted right before we start. Now, yeah. once I, I was, you know, first of all, I was so excited because I know the amount of child sacrifice that's happening every day on planet Earth. And um, I, one of the reasons why I got so, like, deep into it two years ago and was like working with the team and I was on the discord chat and I was like you know doing the whole nine yards you're on discord yeah oh I'm on discord too we gotta we oh. gotta connect on discord yeah absolutely I love Discord. Right. yeah yeah two years ago I was on discord and I was like the organized well I was helping to organize this group of individuals who were so excited about Q so excited about Tyler and um I, the prime creator literally like was like, okay, you've learned enough now. Okay, you're not getting too excited now. Time to move on. So legit, the, the prime creator like, no, you know, you're not gonna go that deep. And so I was like, okay, well that was interesting. And I just kept watching, and I was really excited because I did see, I felt like, um, especially with Q and Trump, I felt like, okay, holy cannoli, like here we go. Here's some. You know, real good guys who are standing up for child sacrifice and standing up for trafficking and this, that, and the other. And um, and I'm still, you know, the verdict is not in with me. I still have so much to learn. I do not claim to know anything right now. I know nothing. I know nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We don't know shit. We don't know anything about nothing. Like we know um, nothing. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and then it was. You know, and I had been paying attention to the anytime the Q drops, right? Like I was, you know, the Q drops. And um, there was one time where Q dropped uh, a few, um, what is it, Ephesians, um, like 6, 12, 6 through 13, where it talks about put on the armor of God. And so, you know, and that's literally one of my favorite Bible verses on the planet. And so I was like, oh, that is a sign from Prime Creator. Q is good. And so I, you know, I was still on the, again, I am not, not on the cute bandwagon. I'm just kind of on the sidelines of like, wait a second. You know, a lot of times people will want you to believe something. And so they'll leave you these breadcrumbs, but you know, think about the children who, who picked up the breadcrumbs that got eaten by the, you know, what's that fairy tale? Remember where the woman bakes them? Yeah. Hansel and Gretel. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. All of the breadcrumbs. <laughs> and, and so I was like, okay, I don't want to be like Hansel and Gretel. So I'm just going to stand the sidelines. And then recently is when I saw a video um, from a, from a channel that I have, I've watched so many of their videos. I kind of get a sense of where they're coming from. And this video that they did, yeah, it was all about Quetzalcoatl. Quetzalcoatl, I guess. Quetzalcoatl, yeah, whatever it is. Yeah. But, you know, they really highlighted this cue. They showed the link between Quetzalcoatl and this movie, Q. And that's when all of a sudden I was like, whoa, wait a second. I've got to, I really have to take a step back. You know, not everything is as it seems. No, and, you know, the thing with Q, there's a, th let's, let's get into this, because the QAnon, conspiracy is very like i said very famous it's very it's been out of all the conspiracy theories that were all publicly debunked on the media q anon was the biggest one because of its association with the trump administration and all that stuff uh i i it also the thing is as q brought up a lot of people in the media even outside the media just people talking about q often would use 
other terms like the Trump is using is playing uh, three dimensional chess. This is another term that comes in that in tandem with the conspiracy where for anyone that doesn't understand what that means, it's basically, okay, well, three dimensional chess is a, a Star Trek reference. Mm -hmm. There's a, a chess set that as instead of one chess board, you have these several, several le smaller levels. So you're not just playing front to back, you're playing top to bottom at the same time. So the relevance of that is, it appears on one level that Trump is just this crazy, you know, clown kind of guy. But then on another level, he is the, the Alliance president who has been sent here by God himself to defeat Satan and the pedophile ring. Right. The deep state. And a lot of times that's, it gets framed in that way. So the, my, the reason I bring up the three dimensional chess in relation to Q is that both of these things are Star Trek references. Now, Q in Star Trek, the next generation, the, the probably the best Star Trek show that's ever come out, in my opinion, the very first episode is called Encounter at Farpoint, where we see Captain Picard and the Enterprise going off on these missions where suddenly they're, they encounter this being known as Q, played by John Delancey. Okay, and Q. I didn't know this. Yes, now this is really interesting because Q... Wow is one of the most notorious, infamous villains of the Star Trek universe. He actually, the, the thing that if you, if, to take, if you want to take one thing away from Star Trek about Q, is that anytime Q shows up, never trust what Q has to say <laughs> in Star Trek. That was like, so when the QAnon conspiracy started to take hold, and then they're also saying, oh, well, he's playing three-dimensional chess. So in the back of my mind, I'm thinking Star Trek, Star Trek. And my immediate reaction to this is like, just from a Star Trek perspective, don't trust what Q has to say. And the, if you watch, I, I highly encourage you watch, the, the start watching The Next Generation if you haven't seen it, but the first episode in particular, where you see Q, he, Q decides to take P Captain Picard and the, the crew of the Enterprise and remove them from the ship and put them into this trial, almost like what David Wilcock and a lot of the Q conspiracy, conspiracy people would say that this whole thing's leading up to, which is a big mass arrest or some sort of tribunal Nuremberg type scenario. Well, that's exactly what Q does to Captain Picard and the crew of the Enterprise. He holds them accountable for all the crimes against humanity that humanity has perpetrated. But the thing is, is that Captain Picard as a Starfleet captain from the 24th century in this timeline of Star Trek, they had already resolved all their differences after World War III and this big apocalyptic thing. Humanity became united and was a, like a utopian civilization. But Q was still, Q seems to have a grudge against the crew of the Enterprise. And there's a lot of, Gene Roddenberry was a 33rd degree Freemason or at least a 32nd degree. I personally don't think that we ever get to see in the public sphere any 33rd degree Masons. The 33 and above, which there definitely are levels above that, they're in their own little universe bubble. We may see 32nd or people that claim they're 33rd, but I don't, my, that's my own personal opinion. I don't really think we'd see 33, but I digress. Gene Roddenberry was high up there in the Freemasons and there's tons of Freemasonic symbolism and esoteric symbolism throughout the first few series of Star Trek, Star Trek, the original series and the next generation, especially to the point where Q, when they are conducting Q takes Picard and his crew back to the time, back in time to when these tribunals were happening on earth at the end of world war three. And, and it's this, just this kind of apocalyptic kangaroo court kind of scenario and Q plays the judge and he's dressed in the exact same attire as one of these ceremonial Freemason robes where you, you look at a photo next to side by side of Q from the show and one of these Freemason lodges it's there's no there's no question it's the same thing so all this stuff kind of in the back of my head when the Q conspiracy is coming out I, I definitely think that there is, I, I think it would be foolish to think there isn't a, some sort of intelligence war going on within 
the right. intelligence communities, the military communities, the geopolitical world communities, or stuff that we're not seeing in the news with a lot of these people. And I do, like we've said before, there's a spiritual war going on. There are white hats and black hats to use that terminology. I totally think that. Um, I'm just not so sure about the true motivations of what the Q thing is because a lot of it revolves around gematria, numerology, um, a lot of statements that you have to decode and make sense of. But the thing about a lot of that stuff, and I have no problem with that. I think it's great. We need to understand this. There, there is a lot of validity to numerology and gematria and understanding the, the meaning of numbers and everything. But just like reading a general horoscope online, which may be very specific to you and means something very specific to you, someone else reading the exact same thing can have a completely different interpretation of it. And it's very true to them as well, but completely different. Just reading that one little statement. And a lot of the cue drops have been these blurbs or these numbers and these sequences that have to, that end up getting decoded. I definitely think there's something to it, but it's also, this is why I'm a little detached from it. I'm not completely against it, but I'm also looking at it like, this seems like it could be uh, misinterpreted a lot of, uh, and co-opted and exploited. <laughs> oh my God, I think my mom's home. Hey, hey, hey. Oh my god. The dogs the dogs have been released. Wow, that was crazy. So I guess hold on, I'm gonna pause it. Yeah, we're back on. Okay. Um this is so awesome because um well, first, as you were talking about um, Star Trek, right now I have been, I've never been a Star Trek fan, by the way. Although it makes sense that I would be because of science, technology, engineering, and math, but um, I, my parents never really like allowed me to watch things like that. And so uh, now that I, uh, and programming my first software, I have like, you know, um, well, my housemates, they're Microsoft programmers, so they are all into Star Trek. They've seen like legit every single episode ever. And they exposed me to Star Trek Voyager, female captain, of course. So I've been watching that one. Um, I will definitely check out the one that you're talking about because I'm very, very interested about this whole key thing especially after watching this one uh, YouTube channel really link Q with lots of quotes. I got to figure out how to say that by the way. I've got to pronounce it better. Yeah. Um, <laughs> a, yeah. You know what? We'll, ne we'll never be able to say it right yeah. because <laughs> it's just, it's just our language. Um, but yes, go, go for it. <laughs> um, as we're talking, what really struck me is um, well, there, the amount of people that have been like, okay, when is the next Q drop? And how come there haven't been more um, indictments? How come there's no, no one arrested? You know, this, that, and the other. There have been a lot of questions about this. And as you were talking, I started to really get into my mind of like, wow, is this just a straight up distraction for us to think that something is coming? That some some great you know savior from the sky is going to save us from all the shenanigans that are going on here in planet Earth. And as I was just um, outside my room for a moment, I was like, "Wow, is this is Q distraction? Is Q distraction?" All of a sudden, full circle to what I've been researching today, I saw some. I saw it well. Let me just backtrack. So just pause for a moment on the Q talk. What I, and we'll come back to full circle for that for sure. What I have been research, re researching right now, which has been a super, like I've just heard from Prime Creator that this is so important, 
is for me to truly understand the origins of Egyptian timeline juxtaposed to Yeshua. Not in ends and Jesus Christ, by the way, which I do not feel are the same people. Um, and so I really have been diving deep into like, what is all of this? This makes zero sense. I'm reading this book called Lost Years of Jesus right now. I'm watching Ralph Ellis like constantly, who talks about actually that Jesus or Yeshua was actually a king of Edessa who came out of Syria. And he was standing up to the religious shenanigans at that time. And actually, according to Ralph Ellis, Christianity has nothing to do with Yeshua or the way followers and has everything to do with Saul or Paul, who was an enemy of Yeshua. And basically that Christianity is based on Romans, Roman mythology and and the Roman timeline. So all of a sudden, as you were talking about Q, and then I went out for a second and I'm like, okay, okay, what's going on here? And then I saw in my mind's eye the whole Jesus Christ mythology that the Romans created was also, I mean, based on what you and I are talking about, let's say if Q is a distraction, let's say Q is to distract us, to make us think that the good guys are winning to make us think that somehow something is being done on planet earth to you know to really like thwart the plans of the anti-life um that would be similar to a mythology of a jesus christ yeah and the roman thing as you put it yeah yeah <clears throat> that's a really good context to frame it in. I, I agree with that, that all uh, we're constantly being bombarded with psychological, there's psychological warfare out there. Not, not yeah. the biggest fan of Alex Jones, but I think his concept of info war is really pertinent to this whole discussion. It's been going on for thousands of years in terms of who controls the narrative, what are people believing. And the thing about the Q conspiracy that makes me really question it, or at least I, I, a lot of questions come up for me. I'm not just gun ho with it as people, it's, it's a lot of people are. A lot of people just are diehard Q supporters and advocate that this is the real deal. Uh, I, they basically not, think like Q has come to save them. Yeah, yeah, and, that, and, and, and more so that Donald Trump himself has come to save us. Now, I, I'm not so sure about that. Now, these are the things that, and I'm not, I'm not yes or no in that. I'm just not sure. I don't know. And I, like you said, I ref Yeah, I, disclaimer. I, you reserve yeah, the disclaimer. right to change your mind. <laughs> reserve that right all the way, baby. And so the thing about Q in this context is that out of all the years of presidents, politics, socio-political events going on around the world and conspiracies always being in the background or on the fringe of the discussion, very small groups of people believing or talking about these things. This, I think this is the first time, at least in the modern era, the 20th century, 21st century, that a conspiracy theory is endorsed for all intents and purposes by the current administration of the United States. They don't publicly dis, dis, uh, endorse it, but they don't deny it. And I think if anything, Donald Trump is a, he knows how to work the room. He knows how to play up an audience and get people riled up. He's a game show host for goodness sake. Yeah, and, he, and he wrote the book, The Art of the Deal. Yeah. Yeah. So he, he's good at that. So I'm not, so if, with that being said, he, there is a, an endorsement. He, but when Donald Trump became president, he went on Alex Jones's show and told Alex Jones that yes, basically everything's real and you're going to be very happy with what we're going to do. This is the first time that's ever happened in, in our current modern era here. So that as a historical context, very important to consider. Now, the thing about the Q conspiracy, a lot, and there's a lot of, it's not a, it's not a consensus. 
right? There's, it's, there are a lot of people de, uh, decoding what's going on with Q and then you got different people believing it. But by and large, the majority of the Q people are framing it in the sense of the old world of the good versus evil thing. And to take it a step further, they frame it in the sense that the Republicans are the good guys and the Democrats are the evil Satanists. The ones who are Republican, who are Christians, believe in Jesus, are the good guys. And then the Democrats, who are all Satanist, pedophile, uh, baby-eating, reptilian worshipers. That a lot of, and that, like I, like I said before, this is not the consensus. There is no consensus with Q. I don't care what people say. There is no fucking consensus with that. There's a lot of talk about it, and it's a big deal in that way. But there are a lot of people who never were into conspiracies before, but now with all of the distrust for the media, which is true, uh, and the distrust for the, the system as it is, which is true, people are now starting to turn, well, wait a minute, what's really going on? And we've been talking about this for 10, 11, 12 years, and there are other people that have been going into this for way long, but there's a, another emerging generation or another wave of people that are coming in with the Q thing now for the first time starting to ask these questions. And it's, that's the thing that makes me cautious about this because it, it, it almost endorses everything. It, it excuses all the things that are really going on in terms of what the actions and decisions of Donald Trump and the administration and not just him, but the legacy, because he's carrying on a legacy that Obama did, that Obama carried on from Bush. There's definitely a continuation, a continuity of what these people have been doing for quite some time. A lot of people would see that Donald Trump is just this complete outsider who had nothing to do with that. And I'm not so sure of that. I see him as kind of the logical- Well, they legit have, um, there have been people now who have done research that, um, you know, his bloodline goes way, way, way back. And it's uh, you, you really can, and first of all, um, the United States has never been sovereign from England, so yeah, there's that, and so of course he has this legacy going on through the ages of the United States. We've never been sovereign from the royal kingdom, let's be real, I mean, even our first printing presses were um, in, in, a big part because of the money from um, the Royal Kingdom. And I just feel like individuals are not, it's, yeah, 100%. I, you know, he was placed in the presidency so that people would not overthrow the government. <laughs> Let's be very real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, and, and, and even still, they're, they're ever, almost throughout, at least throughout our lifetimes, there has been this ping-ponging effect from, again, right versus left, and I don't agree yeah, with that. Republican, That's the Democrat, right? Republican, Democrat. Guess that, what? Right. There are different sides of the same. Exactly. Again, back to the red pill versus the blue pill narrative. That no matter which pill you take, you're still taking a pill, and you're still. It's it's like two hands. Which hand do you choose? Those hands are attached to the same head, to the same body, to the same mind that's directing this whole thing. And you can look at pretty much every major historical account throughout the last ever, really, and see there's been this hidden influencing thing controlling both sides, or at least influencing both sides to fight each other and keep things divided. So I'm just, with the Q conspiracy, that's the thing that concerns me that, like, a, a, a big part of... I lean more towards how, whether or not it's true, if it is, if it's not, I think it's being exploited just like anything with the agenda in place that's always been there, which is to distract from what's really going on. There's a like a psyop component to this because suddenly now you have a ton of people that are basically ignoring what the president's doing saying, yeah, he's doing a bunch of terrible stuff. He's saying a bunch of terrible things and, and all the administration, they're cutting all these things, but don't pay attention to that. It's three-dimensional chess. What's really going on is the stuff we're not seeing. And in a way, that is true. But at the same time, now we're kind of authorizing this state of ignorance, being like, I don't have to see what's going on because I'm just going to trust that the good guys are controlling everything. And it, if it comes down to the whole pedo gate, pizza gate, thing which is definitely real there is definitely a child chat trafficking ring there all this stuff going on 
And I think there are a lot of efforts going on to dismantle that right now. I don't know if it's directly because of Trump or not, but I think that when you look at it, if Don, because the people like David Wilcock would say is that Donald Trump is the alliance president and that he is the good guy in the scenario, that he's doing something different than all the other guys did. But I don't know. I think he, it's the same thing. 100%. You and I both know that we cannot trust David Wilcox. Like, yeah. Yeah, we can't. Not anymore, anyway. No. He, he is absolutely a, a psyop as well. Um, I would, you know, the thing is, um, again, I am, like, so steep in, in like, the Bible right now and the Hebrew Torah, and I also have been really studying Revelation. And what I know is that, first of all, and again, I'm not stating that Yeshua is like the savior Messiah. I, I'm still, you know, I'm still working out what I understand about the difference between Jesus Christ and Yeshua HaMashiach. What I do know, though, is that there are many Jews who are looking for a Messiah. And they um, have never believed that Yeshua HaMashiach or Jesus Christ was the same Messiah. And in fact, they felt that the Messiah would come later on. And there have been so many YouTube channels that I subscribe to that have stated that Jared Kushner is the Antichrist. And then, you know, you could think that Trump was the Antichrist, but that he is going to save the Jewish people. I don't know. What I do know is that um, Trump has fulfilled a lot of the signs in Revelation, number one by moving the capital uh, of Israel to Jerusalem. That was one of the signs mentioned in Revelation. And now we have the third temple being built. And that is another sign in Revelation. Um, one thing I have to say, though, is where are all the arrests of the people who are practicing child right. Right. And, and child sacrifice and, and child trafficking? You know, and so what I sense is like these people think that they're just playing a chess game and they need to follow the rules and, oh, maybe it is a 3D chess game, but they're still following the rules of chess. Yeah, still playing. They're the still game. playing. Yeah, and legit, I'm kind of like, hey, wait a second. How about we stop playing chess and we realize how important lives are? And if you were actually going to do something, why are you not doing it now? Because guess what? He talks. You know, and by the way, I totally reserve the right to change your mind, and I'm not bashing anyone, but when you when you get down to, you know, the meat of things, and you really do study about these people's words, it's like they're just stringing us along on this bread from trail, and I'll, before you know it, we're going to end up in the oven. Exactly. Exactly. I, 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 that is the most important thing here to realize, is, is that they're the whole Q conspiracy, like that Q map to bring it kind of back to that point in our discussion before it's a cool looking picture, but what the fuck like that? What is the purpose of that? Like, Oh yeah, here's the truth. If you just understand what's going on this map and you'll understand it's like, there's no rhyme or reason to that map. It's just a bunch of, can everything is connected anyway. You're going to find connections in everything. If you start looking for them and certainly all that stuff is connected but what's at the center of all that? It's like, those are all things that the person, by and large, any person who looks at that map, gazes upon its images, those are things that you can't control or change in your own personal sphere. Of course, there's the butterfly effect. Of course, everything we affects everything. But when it comes to the acting lo locally to affect things globally perspective, it's like, those are things that, if anything, will instill fear into the yeah. person looking at it because it's like, okay. this is all fucked up. Like straight up depression. You're like, oh shit, this is a fuck show. <laughs> yes, yes. So it's it's uh, it's, it, and you know something too. I was looking at when you mentioned Messiah. The I, there's a really I, we might have talked about this at some point, but there's a great, great miniseries that came out last year called, on the events of Waco, Waco, Texas. Uh, have you, you are you familiar with that whole? I'm familiar with Waco, Texas, but I'm not familiar about what, what thing you're talking about. All right, well, it's it was on Paramount Network. I'm sure you could find it at some point, but it's it's a great depiction of what happened in 
in that historical event. One of the things that st stuck with me is, is David Koresh, the leader of that group. I would not even call him a cult leader. This guy was just uh, a very, in he had a lot of the traits. It'd be easy to just, it'd be easy to just say, ah, he's a cult leader and everything. He's just had a bunch of crazy people following him. You can't say that because the people following were not crazy people. This was like a teacher. And the, the thing is a lot of when they, when they've talked about it in the media at the time, which was nothing like what it is now, I don't think they would have ever, ever been able to get away with something like that in today's world with the internet and everyone having cell phones. But when they would talk about David Koresh and the followers and the media reporters, they would say, David Koresh believes he's the Messiah. And everyone says he's the Messiah. And then they would go and interview people after the fact that were in, uh, his, in his camp in that town on Mount Carmel. They would say, no, he's not the Messiah. He's a Messiah. He's a Lamb of God, but he is not the Messiah. He's not. People would then on the media say, oh, he believes he's Jesus reincarnated. It's like that. He never said that. And no one ever believed that for a second that was there. They were all like, no. If you look at what the definition of a Messiah is in that basic term, of course, if you go to Wikipedia and you look at it, it says a promised deliverer of the Jewish people in the Hebrew Bible. But I think a better... Or even Moses. Or even Moses. He considered a Messiah. That, and that exactly leads to the better definition, in my opinion, which is a leader of a particular group of ca or cause. So, oh. so it's like, yeah, sure. There are going to be tons of messiahs throughout history. A really prominent teacher who or leader oh. in a community that galvanizes the people to a particular cause. You're going Martin Luther King in that respect was a yeah. was a messiah. So mm -hmm. I think, and and then back to one of the other things you were talking about. You referred to the Antichrist. Now, let's just do some word play here and say that Christ or Yeshua or these people, they were Messiah type figures. They were leaders. They were cultural leaders who galvanized the people to follow a cause. Um, let's say that that Christ, the Christ, Jesus Christ is a leader or a Messiah. Well, an antichrist in that type of framing is somebody who destroys the understanding of what leadership is all about and, and actually is the opposite of what a leader does. A leader guides the people and leads the people. Whereas an antichrist will stand there and seem like a leader, but ultimately they dismantle the whole concept of leadership altogether and just turns it into chaos and turns it into anarchy and turns it into just a big mess with no coherence whatsoever. I think a good Messiah or a good teacher or a good leader will help like a, like an, a, symph a, a conductor in a symphony they're going to help coordinate the music that doesn't make everybody play the music or teach everyone how to play the music. Everyone knows how to play the music. They all have their own sheet music there. The orchestrator or the, uh, the, the conductor will coordinate the music so that it all plays in harmony. An antichrist, however, I think is somebody who stands up there and just, you know, does the complete opposite of that. It's somehow, uh, causes the thing to sound like shit and all cacophony like. Well, it's so funny, and I'm actually so glad that we're getting into this because, oh, first of all, I just don't even like the word Christ anymore. Um, and I don't like that word because of the research I'm doing around the difference between Jesus Christ and Yeshua HaMashiach, which by the way, HaMashiach listeners, HaMashiach means anointed one. So also it would, you know, correlate with Christ because Christ, according to Romans, <laughs> means anointed one. And it's like, let's be real. Like I am getting to the point where I don't trust King James. I don't trust, he pulled out tons of books that were going to schedule to be in the Bible. Um, I don't even trust this whole Jesus Christ shenanigans anyway, because if, if this individual did have Hebrew heritage, guess what? A J did not, it didn't even exist in that, in the alphabet. So, <laughs> yeah, so like mind boggling. Okay. So this Jesus Christ is this Roman creation then if we're to literally look like Christ anointed, which is redundant, so let's say, you know, Christ, 
then the Antichrist would be anything that stands against this Roman ideology of what something should be or a leader should be. And legit, like how many times do we hear all roads lead to Rome? That's a, yeah, that's a good point. I haven't heard that in a while, but that I have heard that. And when are we going to see, like, hello, have you seen the, um, the churches that the Roman Catholics have built or like the main, you know, thing that they built, um, looks like a serpent and let's be real people. They own a telescope in Arizona called Lucifer. Yeah. What the hell is that all about? Exactly. So, yeah. (laughs) I know. Like, we should literally just think about that for a moment. Yeah. So here we're taking a a terminology of Antichrist from a Roman Catholic church who has a telescope called Lucifer. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the the way you're putting this is so important. And for all the people watching this right now, I think this is... A vital, a, a, a vital key to understanding what we were talking about in the beginning about history, that we don't know the history, we don't remember the history, if we can't learn from it, then we're going to be doomed to repeat it over and over again. All of the stuff you just described is taking the, taking the religious and theore- theosophical understandings that we've all associated with religion but you've taken it and put it into historical context, remove all of the, the mystical religious association. But, well, let's look at the, 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 like the Roman Catholic Church. Let's look at the Roman government. Let's look at how this actually happened in histor- historic times. And that is so important to this whole thing. And when you look at it that way, it flips. If, it, when you look at the actual history, it's the ultimate pole shift where you see that everything we've been taught has been skewed or flipped on its side where we're looking – it's like up is down and down is up all of a sudden. It's like, what? That's, and that is, that is the big thing we need to recognize. I think we're all recognizing now with what we've been told. It's like what we've been told is what, the, what's that? It's like stranger things. Yes. The upside down. Exactly. So there's that. And then also I, yeah, cause I completely agree with you. And again, we, we've made mental note of this before, but we will have to do a specific show on, uh, words and linguistics, terminology, and all that stuff. The lexicon. We need to do a lexicon episode for sure, because I com- that that is, I completely agree uh, with the term Christ and the way that it's been associated with all this stuff. And when it's buried in a a mess of history, of course we're gonna everything's gonna get turned on its on its on its head. Also, though, when you look at it at the because again the the simultaneous existence of evolution and creation, simultaneous events the past and the future, simultaneous events. We're in the present moment. When you look at the other side of this as well, which is like when I hear the term Christ, again, the C-H-R-I-S-T, like let's, if we're, the the way I'm about to describe this is not spelled that way. The the term Christ is more spelled K-R-I-S-T, which is in my opinion on this, because I agree with that, everything you said in the historical sense, but then on the on the esoteric side, let's just say, for the uh, lack of a better word here. Esoteric or exoteric? Esoteric, I think. Um, Okay, so Christ in this sense is, represents to me like a crystal. It's a, it's a, it's a crystal, a shape. It's a, it's a structure that, similar to a prism, when you shine light through it, 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 it creates a, a, the light spectrum. You, know, you shine one beam of light through it and then you can see all of these other frequencies. And the thing is, is that all these other frequencies, you can look, isolate them and see red, blue, green, yellow, all these separate frequencies and they seem separate. But when you feed them all back into the crystal again, when you feed all of these things that are separate back in through the Christ or the crystal, K-R-I-S-T, you get the singular light again, which in the the new age world people talk about christ consciousness i think this is really the the other people when they talk about christ they might mean this but then again it's buried in a lexicon of bullshit and history let's for a moment though and i really want to pause you because i love what you're saying absolutely first of all i believe every single being has the ability 
within their pineal gland to radiate out crystal consciousness. And I, let's, we're really, you know, I don't want to ever call it Christ consciousness anymore because now what I understand about Roman Catholicism and I understand about what Christ really means, it does not mean the same thing. Crystal consciousness. That, it's that, crystal yeah. consciousness. Crystal yes. with a K. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like yes, exactly. yeah. No, yeah. I totally, totally, totally agree with you. And pure colors through our pineal gland will radiate out pure white and gold gloriousness. And so I 100% concur with that. And I know also that, which is actually the only thing I do know. By yeah, the way. I was going to say, I was going to, you, you beat me to <laughs> it. I, the like, one thing. I don't know anything, but this is yeah, the one thing. There is one thing. thing. The one thing. It's easier to know just one thing than to know all things. Because oh, if I you know, know that one thing, then you know everything. I know. And actually, <laughs> I think this is my message. Because it is the one thing. Which is what? The Tell one me. one thing that I know. Are you ready for this, listeners and subscribers? <laughs> <laughs> remember to like and subscribe. <laughs> Check the, remember to hit the, the bell at the bottom of the you know, thing. If you love us. If you love us. <laughs> We don't want any subscribers who don't love us. P.S. <laughs> uh, no, the one truly, and I'm telling you this so, so, so deeply. The one thing that I know is every being has a pineal gland. Every being, every human being has a pineal gland. Yes. That's the one thing I know. And, and it just as an offshoot of the one thing I know, this pineal gland has the potential to radiate pure white light. Yeah. The pineal so those gland. Are the two things that I know, which means that every human being has the ability to radiate out crystal consciousness. And yeah. so as such, that should be highlighted in this whole BS Christ consciousness, like legit Alex, like I am very now aware that the new age is based on a seed that was based off of a very impure seed, which is a name. And you and I both know about names. Names mean everything. They are a frequency that describe this being and if you deviate from that name by the way Yeshua is so much different than Jesus okay and also if we're really going with um, his Hebrew heritage there was no J in there in it right and back to just another little movie side note there in Indiana Jones just with the letter J it's funny because Indiana Jones in the last crusade when Which he's trying that? to it's the third and probably the best Indiana Jones movie with his father. They're looking for the Holy Grail and they get to this final uh, challenge where he has to get the Holy Grail and he has this uh, floor, kind of like that show Legends of the Hidden Temple from back in the 90s where he's going, there's a big floor with all these different letters and it says if you can walk across and spell the name of God, then you can get to the other side. And he's like figuring what? out God. That's and he goes, Yes, and he goes, oh, the God, oh, and he goes, Jehovah, okay. And then he, he sees a J right there. What's that? What happened? This, this is hilarious. He goes, oh, it start Jehovah, J. And he goes, he puts his foot out on the J and just goes, J, and just falls right through the floor. And he's like, ah! And he gets back up to the top and he stands there and he goes, ah, of course. In Latin, Jehovah starts with an I. It was just this hilarious moment. And with my friend, Mike, we always joke about that. We're always just going, Jay. It's like, no. <laughs> okay, look, and even movies tell us, movies even tell us, movies tell us the truth, by the way. But for some reason, people don't follow them because they think they're movies. But guess what? They're telling the truth in those yeah. movies. Yeah, spoiler alert. Yeah, spoiler alert, there's no J. Yeah, spoiler <laughs> Yeah, that's that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, but that, yeah, that's that's a that's a really great distinction. We can we can agree on that a hundred percent for everybody out there watching and listening right now. Again, 
remember that the words that we use, we're, we're casting spells all the time to use that, that type of language. The words we say matter, but the thing is they're symbols. And the thing is that symbols have a lot of power to them. We could, it's like when you read a book, let's say you read a book, but you have no context of anything. Just imagine like a cave person that could learn how to read and they read some Shakespeare book and they can actually sound out the words and say the things. And it sounds like they know what they're talking about based on the fact they're reading these words, but they're cavemen. They were taught how to read, but they don't know what anything of that stuff means. And that I think applies to a lot of the words and terminology that we use. We say these things all the time. We say, yeah, this is that, and this is that other thing. But no, they mean it. we're saying stuff we don't even realize what it really means. And you bring in the actual historical context of everything and you find out there's no J and the whole thing is all like topsy-turvy. We, yeah. we got we to take a step back and start saying, okay, what are we really talking about? What are yeah. we really saying? What do, and more importantly, what do we really mean when we say what we say? That's yeah. when the real, real knowledge starts to come in there. Yes, because that's when your heart and your third eye line up. Yes. Because truly there are too many people who are saying something from their heart and their third eye isn't aligning because they're just trying to control other people. And we yeah. have to literally start asking Prime Creator for spiritual discernment. Like now more than ever. And one of the things I wanted to say about uh, Lexicon and about all of a sudden as you were talking, first of all, I saw language, I saw languages in different colors. And or I saw language as white, white, and I saw different letters as different colors. Now imagine, and we both know, that diff, um, each color has a specific frequency. Now if you're off a couple of points on one side or on the other, you will either get a, you know, a different hue. You'll get either a dirtier hue, like, a, like there just looks like dirt, right? Like a, like a mustard yellow or something, right? Or you'll get a brighter hue, which could starts moving into a different color, of course, like a super sunny yellow, okay? Like yellow is that specific fre frequency, like 432 hertz or 528 hertz, you get what I'm saying. And then anything off of that, and you're like either super bright or like almost blinding or super dirty, like muddy. Now let's talk about language, okay? I, my goal in life is to get back to the language that we originally were taught. I personally do not sense that my DNA really came from a monkey. I know that I have a very, very, very intelligent creator and that prime creator taught me a language. Now, according to the Old Testament, there was something that the humans, and I'm going to be very real about this. There's something that the humans thought was the prime creator, but it was not. You know, I don't, the, when we were speaking our original language, there's something about the Tower of Babel that I have just not been able to shake. And it's that there have been monuments, and I don't claim to know about the Tower of Babel and Nimrod and things of that nature. I'm still doing my research. So I'm not claiming that this specific event is what I'm going to be talking about. I am going to say though, that this, this, this specific event, including the, the great flood or the, the mud flood or whatever they're calling it now, um, they can go into this category. And I do sense that some of the, these events, including maybe, the Tower of Babel, including maybe the Great Flood, and so on and so forth. All of these different like resets, because what's what is happening is there has been resets. Now I am of the understanding, and just in my own research, I sense that some of these resets or resets were prime creator, and some of them were not. And that when we look at the Tower of Babel, and we we're all speaking one language. What if, now let's just hypothesize, okay? 
Okay. Go with me, subscribers. <laughs> Let's go on an adventure <laughs> and pretend. Um, that's a funny word, by the way. So just let's imagine, what if the Tower of Babel, we didn't actually build a tower all the way up to the firmament. What if it was a spiritual tower? And we were very, like, think of the, um, that beautiful artwork where the prime creator and the human being almost touch fingers. Yeah, on the Sistine Chapel, yeah. Yeah, so what if we were literally that close to touching the prime creator again and seeing ourselves who we are face to face and legit what if there was a force on planet that was like h no in fact so that that guy probably said hell no <laughs> he probably was like <laughs> hell no <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then we went through that and now it's been these series of confusion confusion and guess what what i meant to say about the um, spectrums of light now imagine that language that we spoke then was a, was like white light, okay? Now imagine like the telephone game, every single time we create a new language all the way down to English or whatever it is from wherever it stems from, it's like the telephone game and it gets a little muddier, a little muddier, a little muddier and confusing and all of a sudden we're saying good morning, which means morning and sad, like holy cannoli, like what is yeah. happening people yes yeah wow there's a lot to, there's a, there's so many things to unpack there i I'll, i love the first of all i i love that connection of the tower of babel having this this more of a, a symbolic representation of our spiritual development and we've reached this certain point that it really clicks with me that image it's like we're about to touch and held up yep. <laughs> exactly. explodes after that and you know that i that's that's really cool i just wanted to comment how that that's a really important thing and again this another theme with a lot of the discussions here is that it's not this or that it's this and that at the same time there i think there was some sort of historical event as even the the flood was definitely a historical event, but there also is this spiritual metaphorical learning lesson that comes with it in our terms of our arrogance. And it's the Atlantis story. It's like, oh, was it just a myth or was it a real event? Like it was both. So I think that there there was some sort of event that took place at the Tower of Babel, but the, the but but the spiritual side of it, I think, is really important to, to remember here. And when you look at the, I like what you said, too, with how the creator, or the prime creator, taught us a language in the beginning. And what I, would, what I would go further and say is that this language was not taught to us by the creator. This language was inherent with us yeah, as bestowed by the creator. Yeah. And, this, and the, the best way to demonstrate this it's something that we see all the time in the sky. When we look up at the sky or we look down at the ground, we look up at the sky, we see birds flying. And a lot of times you'll look up and see birds flying in a pattern. They're all flying in the, the, the like a V sometimes. They have a formation. And who taught them how to do that? Who taught these birds to fly like that? I think it's like, no, no one taught the birds how to fly like that. They are, they are in communion with the environment with the with nature in such a way or with the prime creator in that greater sense that they're 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 operating on a language of vibration the language of vibration i think is the original language as bestowed upon us by the prime creator but then to go to another point oh yeah and then to like i said if you look down at the ground even you can see the same thing with ant hills where Ants are all, it looked at almost at, at a glance. It seems like they're all just wandering out all chaotically crazy, but then you look closer and they're actually in complete collaboration with each other. There is an order. They're all in line. They're building this thing, working together. There's a, who taught the ants how to do that? Well, no one taught the ants how, well, maybe they did, but who taught the ants how to do that? No, there, there's a, a vibration that they're all kind of working towards. Like if you take the Uncle Bruce example of, a magnet where you put a piece of paper on top of the magnet and you sprinkle iron filings over it. The, the iron filings will move into the shape of the magnetic field underneath the, underneath the paper, just because we can't see the magnet or we can't see the field that the magnet magnet is, uh, is, is creating there, which is the prime creator in itself, right? The field. 
just because we can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. And that is not taught. That is just self as the writers of the declaration of independence. And then even further back, the Iroquois nation and their Confederacy and the, an older legacy of knowledge of that. We hold these truths to be self evident. Oh there my was, gosh. I literally just wrote self evident. Right. So we're on the same, we're on the same page as always. High five, high five into the camera. Oh my and, gosh, that and so, awesome. yes, so it's really cool. And then the last thing I want to bring up on that, on this, uh, this, this point here is, yeah, wait, yeah, let me, yeah, that's, that's so, that is so funny. I literally funny. wrote, like, I'm taking notes just like when you're taking notes. Yes, yes, it's great. It's important. It helps us stay on track. But the, the other thing I want to bring up here, too, with all that being said, understanding that the, the original language is some sort of language bestowed upon us by the prime creator. It's a language of vibration. We were all working in harmony with the language of vibration. We didn't necessarily, nec it wasn't a language taught to us, but there was a force or a being or a, a pantheon of beings or something. And in the, the, the terminology is put forth by the Gnostics, it's called the Demiurge. This is a being who shows up and everyone believes or make this being makes everyone believe that he is the prime creator. When in fact, he's not the prime creator. Oh, he's, so you're, you're saying that this Demiurge is going to be, quote unquote what the bible is calling the antichrist yes yes or and then in the gods of eden terminology the demiurge is more like enlil who says i am the one who made all of you and i'm your leader and i'm the one that takes care of you i am your lord and it's like no enlil did not make you enki made you and that's only just a small example of like you know the soap opera have a father they have a father which i legit right oh my gosh i can see um i can see genesis all throughout right and it's kind of like back to what we were saying before people worshiping jesus christ nailed up on the cross when in fact that was never the back to i mean we're not using that term anymore christ we're going to say crystals and all that stuff but in the old well, you can still use the word christ because in the context, especially in the context. Christ is mythology, by the way. Right, yes. I, love, I have to say this. I took this note. I love, we need to add this to the lexicon. The event real and the event myth. The event real and the event myth. Yeah, so event yeah. real, as you know, would be the real of what actually transpired. Ooh, how about event real? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've been weird because I really am like diving deep in right now into the difference between, okay, first of all, I've, um, what I have been finding, which I'm not sure yet, Nimrod, Molech, and, oh shoot, there's one other person. Marduk. Marduk. They're the same. Yeah, they are. Okay. And then though, there have been a couple of individuals who are stating that L, the god L, is evil, which I've been having a little bit of challenge completely accepting that one. By the way, I am a big fan of I am that I am. Yeah, what? In, in the Genesis, which um, is Yahweh, Bob, uh, Yahweh, Wahe. And I'm just like completely not sure yet of the things that I've been hearing about L. Because think about how many L's like Daniel, Joel, um, these individuals, Mike L. Um, Cal L, Superman's father, or no, Cal right, L. Exactly. Is, Cal L is Superman, Jor L is his father. No, and precisely <laughs> because they, um, so Michael, Gabriel, Zadkiel, there Michael. are seven angels mentioned in Enoch. Mm -hmm. And so when I hear that and I understand like last names, right? Because you are Alex, the house of Lipton. I'm Kara Jacinta. Oh, I don't know your middle name over there. I'm Kara Jacinta. E the house e of Eli, Eli. Which L. has L in it, yeah. L. <laughs> right, 
Is that how you say it? Eli. L? Yeah, E L I. Yeah, Eli L L. Yeah. So again, um, the L part would just reference which kingdom or house they lived in. So I'm the verse yep. not in yet on on. Have you heard this? Many people are saying that L is actually um, like Baal. Yeah, it's, I, I want to bring back another point you had brought up before, which is the game of telephone. Oh, yeah. Because let's just say, let's just say that yeah. all of these beings or characters we're referring to in the story of history and the mythology and the, all that, that they lived to be a lot longer than the average person did. And even still, let's just say that maybe they were not necessarily individual beings, but it was a title. I don't know if this is true or not. I wouldn't say that this is what I believe, but let's just say even the term Enki. Enki could have been a particular being and or could have been uh, a title for a legacy or a house. Like you used the term care of house Jacinta. There could yeah. have been a continuation like the next heir in the house of Enki. Okay, Enki the next. You even hear it's like, you know, so-and-so the fifth. So and so the sixth. It's just it goes on and on. It's the same name, but it get carried on as a legacy. So I think a lot of these beings more of a bloodline. A bloodline. And I think the another point of this is that the L, I think, is part of that bloodline. It's part of the it's like a uh uh um, L is a part of which bloodline? Well no, I don't know. I don't know if it's any particular oh. bloodline because it's a bloodline. Because Baal Baal is often associated with or ba ba Belial is, is associated with like a bad guy. And, uh, you know, and then there's other well, ones. Apparently like, Baal does like child sacrifice. Right. Oh, yeah, exactly. But then there's also, uh, I was going to say, keep saying Kal-El. That's Superman, though. But you've well, got... you know, the thing is, there, and that's why I said there's a, an event real and a, an event met. So in a lot of times, these movies are giving us real. Right. And yes, and the, these these names are like ba Baal is bad or or Raphael is good or Gabriel is good, right? Molech, Nimrod, and... Right. Molech, Nimrod, and, and Marduk. But that's back to what I was saying before about the game of telephone, because I think that even though all three of those guys, uh, Marduk, Molech, and Nimrod all kind of seem to be the same historical character, over the course of, let's say, a thousand years even, and that legacy of that character getting communicated through generations and wars going on and sides winning, sides losing. It's like Moloch to me is the, it was at the statue at Bohemian Grove that they worship and sacrifice children to. But yeah. Marduk in the Sumerian mythology was more like Ramtha in, we were talking about before with Ramtha and School of Enlightenment, the original Ram, the one that was waging the spiritual war, kind of like Yeshua and the whole King Arthur thing was waging a war to try to fight off the bad guys. That's what Marduk was doing. Marduk was Enki's son and was waging this war to stop the bad guys, but like Darth Vader, Anakin Skywalker was trying to stop the bad guys from happening, but then became the thing that he was fighting all along, became Darth Vader. So Marduk is not necessarily a bad guy in the beginning, but got corrupted and then ultimately became Moloch. Well, one thing I really, really, really want to kind of highlight and, and first of all, I'm so excited about this conversation. I just legit am having the most fun time ever right now. Me too. I um, hope you all out there are as well, because... <laughs> I know, how could you not? <laughs> or literally, just your number one goal in your spirit is truth. There is nothing more warrior-like. You just legit find the, you know, the conversations, and you really do end up finding the truth. That doesn't mean I know anything, but you do find this frequency of truth. And I'm just so excited to talk about it. I've been taking so many notes as you've been talking. Number one, I think it is so imperative that you and I have a book club that just studies the, um, the connections between two books. Gods of Eden, and the Hebrew Old Testament and the Greek New Testament, and the direct translations from both of those languages, number one. That's like what I think. One That's thing. a good foundation, compare and contrast 
uh, endeavor there between those two? I think it's so important because as you were talking, um, I immediately saw the problem that we are facing on this planet and it is this and uh, diversion and deception from truth because truly Alex will circle if we do not know this even you and I we are doomed to repeat the same things that all of our ancestors have gone through and that could be like going into ovens for crying out loud or you know the Nazis were engaged in um, in vaccinations that sterilized people and, and like legit that people in China are getting um, retribution from these exact practices and what I heard when you were talking specifically is this confusion between who is good and who is not for us and I don't want to call them evil and I don't want to call them this or that they're just not for humans like that is legit how I'm going to turn them yeah yeah they're anti-human maybe I, I legit yeah. kind of am saying <laughs> that they, it doesn't mean that you're not human because I know that you Whoever you are, if you're a clone or if you're anything else, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But if you know, if you think you're not human, you think, if you think you're not and uh, you're an alien, if you are for the destruction of this planet, that is how I'm defining this. There's people yeah. who want to destroy this planet, and there are people who absolutely were sent by the light. Now, yeah. saying that, okay, as you were talking. I saw the confusion between Marduk, Moloch, and Nimrod. And that is huge because we really are in this era where Mystery Babylon is going to become like the new New Age. And so, yeah, tell me a little bit more about that. You, you said, tell me, did I hear you correct? You said Mystery Babylon? Yeah. Mystery Babylon. Okay. And what I mean by that is, this is, you know, this, this, that doesn't make, okay, by the way, I don't, um, Mystery Babylon is basically where individuals are doing a set of commands that are focusing on um, commands as opposed to focusing on life it's like commanding life to like let's say you wanted a leaf okay like you saw you saw a beautiful leaf outside or, or even i have a plant i have a leaf okay and i look at this leaf and i do a series of commands which absolutely work because laws are enacted in this planet we have laws there are even programming laws or programming commands there's program programming protocols so let's say though, right here with this leaf, actually this leaf. I have so many leaves, okay? <laughs> so, which, leaf, which leaf will it be? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's say I commanded this leaf and I said, leaf, I do not want you to gain energy the way that you gain energy. I want you to do something else. And I'm going to do a series of, you know, weird things, whether it be like put a circle of salt around you or, you know, baby sacrifice you know like let's get real there's that on the planet here whatever it was there's a gamut of different things you can do that could actually make this leaf start to not operate the way that it does in natural law yeah just putting the leaf into fear will get that totally. process going along yeah. together we're, we're i'm telling this leaf like you suck the way that you gain energy like you need to change holy cannoli what's wrong with you and what i'm talking about is that's the difference between the individuals who are here to work in harmony with nature and the planet and the individuals who want to instill a set of rules opposite to the law of nature. And yeah. when, I, when I talk about this new mystery Babylon, I don't know if anyone or of our list or of our subscribers or you have seen recent Taco Bell commercials, um, they are absolutely promoting this weird, sadistic, um, you know, I don't even like calling it Illuminati anymore because I even discovered 
that the origination of that name started with an, a group of individuals who were standing up against the church. Exactly. Like Galileo, Copernicus, yeah. all those guys. The original Illuminati were the illuminated ones that basically just wanted to do science and like learn stuff and not just take whatever the Roman Catholic church was saying at the time. That was the original Illuminati. I know, I know, but look at now how they've perverted that. Right, well. The same thing of how they've perverted symbols and signs. Like this, you, this is I love you in sign language, but what, what is this? You same. know, like exactly. <laughs> so holy canal. And now, now every time I talk about 369, and let's say I talk about um, any number, everyone, oh my gosh, that is, that is absolutely satanic. But literally, it is your, I, your, um, with going back to something that Uncle Bruce always talks about, the particle on the wave. So let's say I'm looking at 666 and I see it as something so wrong and so horrible and just absolutely putrid and satanic and it's Evil. Put the entire planet. Okay, well, no wonder AI takes us over in the future in Terminator. Yeah, what because we've think? taken the number six. We've yeah. we've taken the number six and we've distorted the meaning. And here's and here this might be the this might be the line that if we were to distinguish between what is that one way versus the other way, um, the difference is simple. It's are you going to be fearful and instill fear, or are you going to be loving and nurture and support with love that those are the two i think ways to approach this like you were talking about with the leaf like you're gonna you suck and you're stupid you're not gonna do it you're gonna do what i say you're not going to you whatever you just even being like fuck you leaf it's just like oh you know that's that's like the fear like oh my god but then there's the loving part where it's like i love you leaf you're so nice and you're doing so good and we're gonna take care of you i'm gonna water you as opposed to like i'm gonna put battery acid in you it's like ah the two things are fear it's like oh do what is right because you're afraid versus do what is right because you are in love and that is a huge difference there and i think another way to demonstrate that is the the Ten Commandments versus an older version of that, which is the Emerald Tablets of Thoth. The Emerald Tablets of Thoth, which had a lot more of the, the Hermes Trimistigus, this whole uh, secret, the whole th as above, so below is in there. There's a whole lot of stuff in there. And the thing that is interesting about the Emerald Tablets of Thoth is that there were no words. It was all symbols meant to just be looked at. And the symbols were so self-evident and so coherent and on a crystalline structure, like a, like a real organic computer chip that had, that had Wi-Fi to your crystal pineal gland that once you looked at it, it was just like instantly downloaded into your consciousness. And it was more so directives on how, on, on just the, the nature of life itself with no expectation on what you should do or what you shouldn't do is just, this is what it is. Here is a seed here. It was like hieroglyphics. So this is a picture. Exactly what uh, paleo proto Hebrew is Aramaic. Exactly. It is right. symbols. And in fact, I'm so happy that you mentioned this because this is again, why I sense that we must go through the Hebrew Torah because the first word of the Bible, holy cannoli, I just can't even believe it. When you study not the modern Hebrew, but you study the symbols, which again, I have now in my research, by the way, and this is just to talk about what you're talking about. In my research, okay, which I know nothing. I love <laughs> <laughs> which after all said and done, I don't know anything. After all the research I've done, uh, I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I literally know nothing. But so, this is why I've been so, I literally am so happy we're having this conversation, Alex, because the last two weeks I have been so, I feel like um, when you swim in the ocean and the waves start coming over you and you fall underneath the water and you literally don't know which way is up, I feel like that's going on. I, in my heart, know I will get to the air, so it's all good. But one thing that I've been really, like, just holy cannoli, what is going on? 
this individual that I've been really researching right now is saying that Yeshua was actually Persian and Egyptian. And he came from a very, very, very long line of kings. And just, you know, King David also was one, King David and King Solomon were some of the richest kings. And according to this individual, he is saying that the Bible is actually like a couple of hundred to a thousand years, or not a thousand, a couple of hundred years off. Which is why it's been confused because people have not actually been able to see it historically, and so then they just deem it as mythology. Yeah, doesn't line but, up. Yeah. Yes, but in actuality, according to this individual, he has found a king who was a king over Syria, whose name was either Yeshua or Isis. And that's, that's, I've heard that too. A, a lot of the, that Isis or Isu or Isa, yeah. that, that whatever, however you want to pronounce it, Quetzalcoatl, Quetzalcoatl, whatever the hell. There's that same okay, same. Okay, but thing. he's totally different than Q. Told it, yeah, to, yeah, totally okay. different things there. But in terms of the Isa, just in terms of yeah, term, the pronunciation. Yeah, in terms of the pronunciation, and yeah, indefinitely, like a, according to, um, like the, it's like east of Egypt. He's known more as Isis, and west of Egypt, which is like more, or, you know, I've got to look at a map if it's Syria, but anyway, um, he was a king over Syria, and actually, a lot of the stories of King Arthur originate with Yeshua. Yeah. Um, yeah. And this individual was a king, and he was not just this, you know, slap me on one cheek and slap me on the other cheek, which the Romans love for everyone to think because what does that do to people it makes them very weak it yeah, makes yeah. them very like in, admissible to um don't fight back yeah don't fight back don't fight back but apparently the real real the event real of this of yeshua jesus or Isis was a king of edessa which is now today syria and this was a very similar king to the kings that you find in the Old Testament of like, holy cannoli, these people are child sacrificing, like legit, they need to be wiped off the planet. Again, I'm not um, advocating that right now. I do think that Prime Creator has things that can restore and repair, but anyway, I'm just talking about historical event reels. Yeah, it's just, it is yeah. what it is. So, but why I'm bringing this up is because a lot of times, and again, this comes full circle to what we talked about last time where we were saying that death isn't anti-life. And so what I want to say is a lot of times when Christians, which by the way, I'm not, um, but <laughs> I have to say that. For the record, I'm not a Christian. For the record. Yeah. On <laughs> More of an anti-Christian. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let people know. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, what a lot of Christians today are under the influence of is just this very um, pathetic and weak Messiah. And then they're willing to do whatever, it, you know, they're, they just don't care. They don't have um, any apathy or any empathy anymore. They have apathy. Um, they're just these individuals who actually are not even aware that there's still child sacrifice on this planet. Like, mm -hmm. let's be real people. There's nothing new under the sun. If it was right. happening back in the day and whether it was King Arthur or Yeshua or Isis or Jesus who had to stand up to this, it's now also happening today. The same thing applies in America with slavery and you had the founding fathers who had all these great ideas, yet they had slaves. They were writing down this great word that all men are created equal or all men are created equal, yet they had slaves. So there was a big contradiction there. And even to take it further with Abraham Lincoln, Civil War, oh, slavery's over. We're done with that. Slavery's in the past. It's like, no, there still is slavery today. It has just changed quite a bit. There still is physical chain and cuff slavery, but there is also financial slavery. There's slavery of beliefs. There's all that. There is still slavery. There is still well, this I'm thing sure going on. We still have um, correctional facilities where they're only making 15 cents an hour, people. That's yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. So it's like, yeah, like you said, nothing new under the sun. This, this stuff is, has just been regurgitated and transformed again, going, we're not even, we're not even going full circle on this one. We're going full spiral because it, it, there's a lot of points coming back that are bringing rise and new meaning to everything we're saying too. So it's, it's, it's incredible that, that we're, we're coming back to this realization and this whole thing. 11 years in the making, people. <laughs> 11 years, yeah. We didn't just come up with all this stuff. <laughs> Sounds like it. But, you know, and then I, well, one last thing I wanted to bring up with the, with the love and the fear. And this also speaks to kind of what you're talking about, the stuff that's still going on, maybe why we're repeating the same things over and over again, is because we're living in fear. When we're living in fear, we're not using our consciousness, our third eyes shut down. Uh, it's not, we're not picking up as many frequencies in that way. But the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, which just showed you the truth. Then you have the Ten Commandments where they wrote down, it was kind of like, we can't bring the Emerald Tablets to everybody. Uh, let's give it the benefit of the doubt. We can't bring the Emerald Tablets to everybody, but we want to give people the essence of what this is. Not everybody's initiated to the point that if they even looked at the Emerald Tablets, they would understand what the hell's going on there. Uh, so let's write down the cliff notes. Let's write down the Emerald Tablets of Thoth for Dummies edition. And since people don't understand about love and they're more easily controlled when they're afraid, let's just tell them not to do certain things. We won't show them what the truth is. We'll just tell them what they shouldn't do. And that's what the Ten Commandments is, is don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. Live this way. Don't do this. And that's like what you were saying to that leap. You're going to live this way and you're not going to do this way. And if you don't, I'm going to pour acid in your, in your, in your soil. Which by the way, I, I do want to highlight this. And I'm, I literally, as you were talking, I got this image of us being Moses and like leading the Israelites to the promised land and what truly that means. And by the way, I have to really point this out. Al. And this is something I do not know, but <laughs> I literally do not know. I don't know, but I just saw this in, in my mind. It's something that I'm research, researching right now, which is Christianity has nothing to do with Yeshua. Okay. It has nothing to do with Christ. And I really want to make that um, distinction because what you just said is very imperative, which is that we're going to write down something for this, this age that we're living in that individuals can read and understand. Yeah, got to give them the cliff notes, put it in yeah. a language people can Which understand. Is that, okay, and again, why I immediately got this image of Moses, who was very, very, very crucial. You know, you could not have had a Yeshua in Moses' time. It would not have worked. It had, would have not have um, said anything to us. And by the way, I really do want to highlight that the individual I'm researching right now has stated that Yeshua was very... You know, there's a reason why King David was so wealthy. There was a reason why King Solomon was so wealthy. He was so wise, right? He talks about having so much wisdom. He actually had, a, like, a, everything we're talking about, the Emerald Tablets, King David and King Solomon had. And it goes all the way back to Moses 100% for certainty. Again, I do not know anything, but... Let's just go. You know some things. I'll give... We, maybe we, we don't know anything, but we can verify... If I could verify if you know something. Well, the thing, what I love about saying that <laughs> is just that it, it doesn't ignite anyone to want to try to argue with me. Right. You know, the thing is, like, do your own research, please. I am not here to be an authority on anything. I'm just talking about what I'm researching. So yeah. back to it. Come now, to your conclusions. Yeah, no, and this is why I want to do the juxtaposition between God's of Eden and the Hebrew um, Torah, the Bible, because there's, like, legit, if we, if we confuse the two, if we can use Egyptian conversion with this Hebrew and we don't actually see the correlation, we cannot learn the origins of where we came from. We cannot learn history and we will be doomed to repeat it. And by the way, I am determined to not repeat history this time. Okay. Yeah. That yeah. is like my solemn swear. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to stop, like, we need to stop living in history and start yeah, like, no, like, we're, actually we're living. To be, move beyond history now. Yeah. So but that, it, yeah, go ahead. Go okay, ahead. So back to what I was saying about this. So you saying that we need to have this like written stuff reminded me of Moses. Okay. Now yeah. back to Moses. Yes, he did the Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments, but also, and this is something similar to Ma'at. Um, yep. Ma'at has forty-two, but in um, Jewish it has six hundred and thirteen. 
Now, I'm not even joking. They are linked 100% because, first of all, I'm born June uh, 6th, 13th, and 42 has this, like, amazing impact on me. So I know that there's linkage. And if, though, if we, if we extract those two, then we're literally like, oh, Hebrew, all of that stuff, shenanigans, which actually, if, if you study some of the things that they practice, scientifically, it's being backed. Now, yes. <clears throat> to what you're talking about with um, emerald tablets, which this individual that I'm researching is talking very heavily that Yeshua, that the reasons why he was able to do so many miracles, the reason why he was able to cast out so many demons is because he held the wisdom within him and he was taught, you know, I'm reading this book now right now, The Lost Years of Jesus. And it talks about in his lost years, he actually went and sought out um, information from Buddha. He went and understood from some of the other Tibetan masters. He did not just take his Hebrew understanding, but he went out and like went to the world and figured out what he needed to do and then came back to do his mission, yeah. which is very crucial. Now, back to what we're talking about, about you and I creating something like this. The reason why individuals have, and first of all, oh yeah, what I was saying, according to who I'm researching, Christianity right now is actually based on straight Roman stuff. Yep. And none of it is healthy. And it actually is based on making people feel bad, making yeah. people Fear. feel imprisoned, yeah. making them feel like tight, like there's a you know God that's condemning them which does not allow them to be creators like we talked about. No, that was ant antithetical to the whole Roman Empire and the structure of having a pope that controls everything. You can't have self-empowered people running around with their own connection to the creator because then who's going to come pay taxes and pay all the money to the church? They, they, they had infallible knowledge, according to them. So if you had anything that contradicted to that, then you were an enemy of the state at that point, And then off with your head or up on the cross, you went. So it's, it's incredible that they ran the operation from fear altogether. So it's, and, and the other thing too, as you were talking, that really I think is important to recognize here, we've touched on it a few times, but is making the correlation between these two cultures, i.e., Egypt and the Semitic cultures or Egypt and the, you know, Judeo-Christianity and Egypt. Which like, I don't, let's not call it Judeo-Christian. Let's literally call it Paleo-Proto-Hebrew. Paleo-Proto-Hebrew. I like that. So that, that's a good yeah, It's very crucial because that is, um, okay, so also who, the per individual that I'm researching who has this information, he stated that Mary was also a title. Uh, a Mary was like a title of a queen and that Yeshua was literally born into royalty. Yes, they were un, um, the other uh, royalty, you know, the like many, Mary. Yeah, many kings um, fight against each other, right? So the, literally the reason why Joseph and Mary and Yeshua had to flee was not because they were not amazing, but because they were under attack. Yes. And let me in, bring another point in this back to the Egyptian thing as well, because there are a lot of connections between the story of Moses and the Egyptian story of Akhenaten. Now the Pharaoh Akhenaten had a very similar story of coming from this, like we're all got all these different gods and all these different beings that no, we're going to worship the sun God. We're going to worship Aten. Now we're going to move the capital over here to Armana and we're going to worship this new, we're going to stop worshiping all these different deities. Everyone's all confused. All the different languages, people are worshiping this, worshiping that. No, let's get back to basics here. Let's start. Let's just like, we're, we'll worship the creator. Let's just, for lack of a better term, I don't even really like that word worship either. But the thing is, Akhenaten, yeah, honor. honor honor, and respect and uh, in the glory and all that stuff. So, recognize, recognize yes. Be a good one. So, Akhenaten and his family with his son Tutankhaten, and that's an important thing. People know him as Tutankhamun, but Amun was a title that was given after his family because his family changed, like, it was very unpopular to the majority of people in Egypt and especially to the, the priest class of traditional Egypt. They is like uh, Akhenaten said, you know what? Don't pay taxes to them anymore. We don't need to pay taxes to the priest class anymore. We'll just bring you straight to the creator. You, you're on the creator's land all day. 
you don't need them anymore. So they were, priest class was obviously pissed with him for that. This is literally the same story as Yeshua. That's exactly my point. Is that big? And then, and then the priest class, once Akhenaten died and there was a whole thor- a story that he was assassinated, his whole family was assassinated. Sekhmet had a huge role to play in this and the legacy of trying to protect this, ha- like this, the, the family of men. I know, I noticed that the whole time. It's great, perfect. Alliance people, alliance. Right, exactly. <laughs> no, so why don't this is legit? One of the things we have to do for our subscribers is create some of these timelines and how they connect. Not just you know the thing is what I saw in like I kind of made me want to throw up. That was such a and I don't know it's just such a lack because um, first of all from the research that I've done, Yeshua wasn't even born December twenty fifth. That was just like a thing that they wanted to do the Romans wanted to do that day so even those things that we're getting in zeitgeist which by the way like I put that in quotes for a very important reason it is not that was not an unveiling of information that was like meant to dis- distract us I feel like the A2K version is legit like yeah let's go through God's of Eden let's go through the Hebrew Bible with a fine tooth comb and put it into an infographic that we yeah. can all understand yeah, I agree. And I think a big part of Zeitgeist, because the thing is, is I, I think there was a lot of interesting information in Zeitgeist, but it was pretty obvious to me that the original intention behind making that movie and telling that story was they sought out to disprove the the store a certain story whether it was jesus or the whole the resurrection that whole thing and christian whatever it was i think it's like look imagine a bunch of atheists who are just already fed up with religion and anything that religion talks about as being real they wanted to show this movie to basically just be like see that it's all bullshit it's yeah. all bullshit, but it's like, you know, it's, it's there's all this astrological stuff. Truth, by the way, there was still like 90%. That's, and that's what I mean. It's like there was some interesting information in there, especially with the uh, astrological correlations, the archetypal correlations. You know, you could see the game of telephone and these myth, mythological or characters that embody the same legacy of this stuff. But the original like foundation of that movie was to be like, well, it wasn't a real story. It was all just astrological stuff going on and it's like no it's not just astrological stuff going on yes that was cool but it's it it was almost like that was trying to be like well forget about the other part they were lying you the whole time here's the real story and it's like no that's still only part of the story absolutely and then if you saw one lie then they wanted you to throw out all of the other things as them being false which by the way 90 percent of that was true so exactly Exactly. You have to have spiritual discernment in order to say, like, okay, where, wait, like, you had to, like, basically, like, comb through. Um, yeah. But truly, we all have a, an absolute ability to have a Hamashiach live within us. The prime creator created us and can give us that discernment that we need. So, yeah, I really, I, I totally concur with you, Psychic had a lot of awesome things but then they just have that like weird thing and you're like what no they didn't set out to prove anything they set out to disprove something and i don't really like when movies or anything as a it's like if you want to prove something wrong that's fine but you have to have something else in its place and message there was a yeah it was you can tell there's there's that same method by atheists and scientists who are in the cult of science and the religion of science where they they they're and and to give them the benefit of the doubt after like we were talking about with the illuminati and its foundations being these scientists who are living under the fear and oppression of the church uh there's that post-traumatic stress from that that like once they got power they're like you know what Whatever they said was fucking bullshit, complete bullshit. We got the truth now. Anything they say is wrong, and we're gonna we're gonna do everything we can to disprove them when they tried to disprove us. So it's the same cat and mouse game they've been playing forever, but it pulls shifted at that point. Exactly. And that I love what you just said. I absolutely like see so much in it because what I heard you say is that truth can start in a group like 
the way that this individual that I'm researching has said that the Illuminati actually started on, or illumination, illuminated yeah, ones. Illuminated ones, yeah. And then somehow ego comes in, and then all of a sudden you've got to prove something, and then all of a sudden truth and life leave from that group. Which, as you can see, you know, like whether it's um, symbols or whether it's numbers or whether it's, you know, a, a certain sect of a group or an organization, inevitably they all pretty much have gotten this ego, I've got to prove something, and they become infiltrated with parasites and ugh. Yeah, yeah, prove that they're right and the other one is wrong. And, uh, back to the full spiral it's not even a full spiral half spiral maybe quarter spiral i don't know but the concept of the demiurge being that uh, hidden influencer between the two sides so if you want to look at the church and the scientists or the or the science and the religion as two different sides to this story the demiurge is the one in the middle that's being like no 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 yeah 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 you're right you're right they're the ones like the rockefellers and the jd oh, morgan's that what talks about yes exactly it's like who will will we'll make will will feed the war Whoa. we'll get these sides to fight each other and then whoever wins i'll side with that one yeah. and then be like yeah the other one's wrong and then continually just start to feed this conflict over and over again so the ego in itself is the representation of the demiurge it's the thing we think of as who we are but really that's not who we are no. We have to break through that and start to see the real nature of who we are. And that's a personal journey. So there, there's a, a, a macro expression of the ego, which is this demiurge, this, I wouldn't call it a supernatural force, but it's just kind of like the macro version of the ego where you've got groups of people like maybe the Bilderberg group or these not anti-life or anti, you know, like, I don't know how to word it in this moment, but we, you know what I'm talking about. These guys that, that kind of, uh, feed into the destructive only nature. They don't see life and death as yeah, one. They just feed the like death for it. Yeah, and it's they're the the yeah anti love. They they split they split the difference. They don't they don't unify the the thing. It's like if you look at life and death as two parts of the same whole. Instead of recognizing life and death are one in this holistic understanding, the ones that are the macro expressions of this ego are the ones that only feed death only they they just look at death and want to bring death to the world whereas oh, whereas it's happen? like yeah death is part of life but you want to you want to also feed life you can't just feed death no. that's out at least an out of balance state so the demiurge loves it when it's out of balance um hold on i'm totally taking notes because you're saying so much and i love this um You have always reminded me of the story or the, you know, ancestral story in Native American where um, there are two wolves and, and the grandfather, you know, the child asks like, well, who's going, you know, which wolf is going to win, the evil one or the good one? And the grandfather says, well, whichever one you feed. And so that really you know again which i love brings it back home to this individual effort that we all can partake in of feeding the the light within us and you know casting away guilt and shame and regret and blame and blah 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 and really you know not again i really want to highlight this uh what uh, it's, it's not bury your head in the sand I only want to think about good I, I really like a lot of new agers and be real like they they don't want to know about child sacrifice yeah they don't want to yeah, know about the plastic you know ocean the size of Texas and the Pacific they're like sorry if we think about it we just perpetuate it and I'm not talking about you know like ruminating on it or meditating on it however i really feel like it's a false sense of positivity i really do sense that the only true positive or true love comes from facing 
the absolute putrid, disgusting, chaotic energy on this planet and being able to smile and say, I love you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not all, it's not all daytime unicorns and wonderful things. There's, there is a, there is a shadow. There is the absence of light. There is this other side of things, you know, we, and we need to pay attention to that. It's like uncle Bruce has this great story too, when he was getting into the, the, the new age world and trying to really live out the experience as taught to him by the cells and okay, I'm just going to be positive. I'm just going to do the right thing. I'm going to talk very calm. I'm going to have only positive thoughts and I'm going to be a certain way. And it was, it got to a point not to, not to really um, disclose or speak too much on his behalf, but it got to a point where he, his, his own daughters, my cousins were getting so frustrated with him because he was, it, it's like, you're trying, you're trying to be someone you're not. And it, it, and it, and it, and he started to get really like, upset with himself at times when he wasn't being a certain way and it's like don't worry about trying to be a certain way you just got to be and don't live up to the expectation of what is right in that way i mean obviously you want to strive and be more positive if you can be you want to be of service to others you want to live more in love but we got to allow for some forgiveness we can't we have to forgive ourselves for that and also allow ourselves to play the game if like we're playing darts you know you're not going to get a bullseye every time right off the bat you got to keep practicing and don't beat yourself up if you don't get a bullseye every time. You, you don't, don't harp on the, ne- the, har- the negative is part of the part of the life, you know, and that's, yeah, I completely feedback. agree with you. It's just feedback. The, the negative stuff that we are going, and my spiritual mentor told me today, he was like, Kara, it's just feedback. If you look at it as just feedback and you don't judge it, you will learn from it just like full circle, holy cannoli. If you fail to learn from history, you are doomed to repeat it. And yes. so don't look at, you know, yes, was it horrific that, you know, Nazi Germany happened and, you know, they, all they wanted to do was just rule the world. And yeah, was it sad? Absolutely. Am I going to ignore it and just like think that if I turn from it, then all of a sudden it didn't happen? No, are you joking? Then you will absolutely go through it again. And that's exactly what America's doing right now. With yeah. and especially in contrast to what Germany has is doing now. Because Germany went through this dark chapter in its history just recently with the Nazis and the Holocaust, all that stuff, right? But if you go to Germany and you and I didn't go to Germany, but I watched a documentary about it, uh, where you you see how the kids are raised in school, they are taught right off the bat, not right off the bat, but they're educated pretty thoroughly about the fact that look, not too long ago, our government, our people committed this horrible thing. Not everybody was directly involved with it, but the fact that we were we, we didn't do anything about it. And we lived, it's like, we allowed this to happen. And they, t- they teach it. They talk about the whole, like the tragedy of, of ignorance and of arrogance of their country of doing all this stuff. They teach the kids about how we, we screwed up, we screwed up. And it, it's important to remember this. Whereas in the United States here, there is completely whitewashed history of the native American genocide. The, and the and the and slavery even for that matter our history was founded on a genocide forget the you know columbus and the founding fathers and you know oh I have, like, push that aside for a second recognize that those were just little moments little kind of uh, little not red flags but little historical oh. moments here here look at this, oh, this oh, yeah th- those were really great but look at all this other stuff that we don't acknowledge and people willfully just ignore and just be like, ah, fucking Native Americans, ah, a bunch of savages. It's <laughs> imagine if in modern day Germany, they were talking about what they did in the Holocaust in that matter. It's like, you can't imagine, imagine if they had a hit, uh, like we have the Columbus day. Imagine they had a Hitler day. Yes. Imagine they had a Hitler day. It's like, no, you cannot have a Hitler day. They can, you oh can have God. a Hitler day. Like, yeah, where did, like, is this real life? <laughs> yes, and it's crazy because it is. It's like that. And so that's why here we are doing the exact same thing the Roman Empire did in America. We pretty much are a reincarnation of the Roman Empire. Oh, yeah. No, we're, we are absolutely. Everything from the military expansiveness to the political turmoil to the, the everything to the Colosseum games of reality TV. It's just, it's, it is a reincarnation of the Roman Empire. 
The Rock's new uh, show. Have you seen that one? No, no, I haven't. What's that one? Oh my gosh, it's um, Titan. It's called Titan. Oh, right. That's right. I heard about it. I haven't it's seen legit. it. Yet. Like, it is absolutely Roman Coliseum style. Well, there you go. So it's like, and that's, and that goes to show you why America is like, Hey, we're heading for a, you know, the country is headed for a not so savory future right now. We have, we still can turn it around. Nothing is set in stone necessarily, but you know, you only get so many chances to, uh, to take the test before you have to do the class over again. And there's that summer school concept, not really looking forward. I don't want to go to summer school. I don't want to take this class again. No, no, we do. And again, this is why I think it's so important. Um, can you pause for two seconds? All right. So yeah, we just had a little uh, uh, break there, but we just started to get back into it. And we were talking about Joe Rogan and Alex Jones and how do they do those shows with like no breaks, all that. It's, 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 it's amazing. The guy's a, the guy's a true champion. Super amazing. I mean, it must be a practice. And he just, I mean, because sometimes he does two podcasts a day, you know, yeah. under different topics. And then sometimes I've even seen where on days he does two podcasts and then in the evening he does an MMA podcast. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Wait. I, I, I do aspire to have a, a similar subscribership i think it's so important to note that he has um he's changed his position at so many times but i do appreciate him bringing people on like alex jones and um who's that other guy eddie someone eddie someone. Eddie, Bra eddie bravo eddie, eddie bravo yeah. oh my god yeah on that show with alex jones he was he was just like sticking alex jones being like you know get purposely getting him super red face angry. And it was just like, Alex, calm down. Alex, Alex, I'm joking. I'm joking. God damn it, that fucking ah, hybrid animals. <laughs> just well, like. You know what amazing. I love about, you know, the thing is we, first of all, I really do sense that we're all, we all have this, um, we are all working on eliminating the dark wolf within ourselves. I'll just say it that way. And, um, and so if, if you, you know, if you walk around with a high and mighty, like holier than thou type of attitude, you really are not living with the Yeshua or any other amazing individual who's walking on this planet. And, you know, there have been amazing people like Enoch and Elijah and not to mention any other culture, which I'm sure is seriously alive in the Bible. But back, back to what I'm saying. Um, if you judge people so much, you cannot learn from them. And one thing I really, like, I'm not even joking. I thought that that, that interview between the three of them or that podcast between the three of them was so cool. It, it was. was. So It was so iconic and it was so important that everyone watch it because one of the biggest things that I noted, and absolutely, is, is Joe probably working for someone? Yes. Is Alex probably working for someone? Yes. Like we all answer to someone. So, yeah. you know, like, let's get beyond that. One of the biggest things I love is, and this is exactly why I became so like, holy cannoli, they're legit as child sacrifice on this planet. What the F are we doing about it? Like literally every single day it's happening. And whether you call Alex Jones a shill or this, that, and the other, sometimes I actually think he's the one person who's getting down to the actual meat. Like, if we're legit to look at the Bible, the one thing that the Bible absolutely states is do not follow people who do child sacrifice. Do not follow people who are, like, excited about their blood and their, you know, pineal gland and adrenochrome. Like, come on, we all know, right? Yeah. Legit, Alex, I've never seen someone so passionate about that. Yeah, and, and it, he he even said, "I'm uh, just as a disclaimer here, not the the the, the prime disclaimer of our, <laughs> not our show, prime not that way. prime disclaimer. The other this other disclaimer I'm about to make. There are many, there are many. that that uh, like out, uh, about uh, disorders. I don't fully uh, 
endorse the oh. nature or the, the worldview mentality of constantly trying to label disorders. But with that being said, as a disclaimer, Alex Jones has said multiple times, even on that podcast, how he has ADD. Uh, just with that disclaimer being said, I'm not a big ADD guy or, you know, I think there's other factors coming into that, but Alex Jones has to deal with so much information. He has so much information. Same thing with David Wilcock for that yeah. matter. They have so much information that they, it's like, it, you almost have to kind of like, he, he'll go from this to this, to this, to this, to this. And that's one of the things I like what Joe would do. Be like, whoa, wait, wait, wait. You, you just said like a hundred things in, in a sentence. Let's go back. I still want to, my brain is slow. I need to figure out what that first thing you said was. So Alex Jones is a really even better than David Wilcock. It's an example of somebody who has so much information and can get so passionate for a word and also like, like emotional that when you start thinking, if you're not, if you're too emotional, again, back to the balance of your emotions and your intellect, you have to have a balance because if you get too emotional, you can't think straight. But if you think too much, then you're not feeling what may or may not be true. You might be missing the, the, the truth of the nature of the matter of things. So Alex Jones, it's like, yeah, you, if you cut through all that emotion, you cut through all that, that with like a sort of truth or a sort, not like literally a sword, but you, you can slice through it with your own mind and discernment. You can find there's a lot of truth in, in the things that he's talking about. I think that's really important. There is all this stuff going on there. And, and to, to say it isn't is, is, is very uh, irresponsible or, or ignorant. And, and the other thing too, that I'll say before I got to let my dog Bambi in because she's barking right now. But the thing is, is that as much as there's all of this stuff, like we had, I had said before, there's this intelligence war going on. It's like, we, we're doing it on this level, but there are, I, I would be, it would be, I'd be remiss to think that there would not be people within those orders or involved or know about those child sacrifices that are in positions of authority, like whether they're in the, the FBI or the, the CIA even. Like we look at CIA and FBI, all these crazy corrupt organizations. And sure, a lot of the organization is, but I think by and large, a lot of the people that are in there are trying to do the right thing. Same thing with like a police department. Maybe the system can make them jaded and not want to and, and be like conform to the system. But I think that there are a lot of people that are probably now more than ever and maybe rise back to the Q phenomenon that a lot of these child sacrifice rings are being exposed and being like investigated and they're being attacked now more than ever. There's more awareness about them now, I think, more than there has been in the last like 30, 40, 50 years. Oh, absolutely, which is now coming full circle to the very beginning of what we were talking about, which is Q. And to know that, like, I mean, he, I guess you could say, even if Q isn't, I mean, truly though, because these individuals who are practicing these very ancient uh, occultist energy ritual. I'm going to call them energy rituals because that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get energy. You know, they're, they would have died like eons ago, but they've figured out this crazy loophole of like, well, if I do this, then I will have, you know, it's just like a video game a little yeah. bit. They've like vampires. Out, yes. Yeah. They figure out the super negative. The sad thing is though, they're using very innocent children. Like that's, that is legit why sometimes I'm like, holy canola, and you, you know, just even if Q isn't off doing, you know, the the legal and justice work, he, the Q anon has absolutely brought light to how horrific this planet, or I would say the planet, at least um, the United States has gotten in terms of this energy ritual that elites do like to. Yeah. And the United States, it's like, and then back to your thing before about how the United States government is basically another branch off of the British royalty and everything. And it's not even just Britain and the United States. In the movie, back to movies, uh, have you seen the movie Doctor Strange? Yes. Okay, so you did. Okay, so that's a part of it. You're gonna you're working through your Marvel Cinematic Universe thing. But I am. I'm kind of working a little backwards, but it is on yeah. our agenda to like legit go through the whole. Thing. Yeah. So that movie. 
was really cool as a. But so a, wait, reference that to the UK and the United yeah, States. Yeah, yeah. So in Doctor Strange, when he becomes initiated into the the wizardry world and everything, and he talks about the different, they talk about the different sanctums around the world where you've got these ancient orders of wizards that are protecting the world against what was it, uh, uh, Darmamu which could be interpreted as the demiurge or even more so like the, I think the AI component that's trying to just infiltrate and infest everything. Mm -hmm. But the three sanctums in Dr. Strange, you had one in New York, one in Hong Kong and another one in London. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's like the Marvel universe way of looking at it. But from the, you know, the conspiracy rabbit hole world and the reality of things, I, from what I understand, it's the three sanctums of the new world order, let's say, is the, you've got Washington DC as the military apparatus, like the Pentagon. And then you've got London as the financial apparatus, which is the banks and the Rothschilds and all that stuff. And then you've got the Vatican, which is the religious apparatus that controls the fate. So you got the Vatican, the London, and Washington DC as the religious, financial, and military arms of this Hydra beast that ultimately wants to control the world and instill it using, using fear to control the population. That's, I think that's like the, you've got these three things that are just really trying to uh, maintain a, a power structure of control over the whole thing. I don't remember where we were at the, uh, originally. Oh, no, going back to <laughs> That is legit why it's so important for you and I. And I go back to that you and I are A2K, right? We're all secure. And so as such, yes, we might be here to champion other individuals to know, to know the truth. However, at the moment, we're charged with you and I knowing the truth. And that, again, is not a static thing. It might be, but it more is us knowing this energy force of truth. And allowing this energy force of truth, which does stand against um, the prime creator, and we will find the truth. And it is so crucial, and it is so in, um, entangled with this wild Egyptian, Persian, Hebrew confusion that the Romans, who start from the religion, have like completely confused us all. Yeah, co-opted destroyed and erased and or in, a, in, in the opposite order of that uh destroyed erased and then co-opted the thing because everybody was so invested in this worldview they couldn't exactly just completely erase it they just had to co-opt it and and distort it for their own personal agenda which is exactly what christianity historically was it was like we're gonna take all of these people and what they worship like it was it the uh, constantine Oh yeah. Um, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna unite all of Rome because Rome most of the Romans at that point in history were all Christian. It's like, you know what, we're gonna make Christianity the state religion and we're gonna make an official state sanctioned book that takes the 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 copies and stories of the of the scriptures and everything and the gospels that that best conform to the state control narrative of the whole thing. Yeah, they yeah, really it, wanted to take the Hebrew um, history and just meld it into this Judeo-Christian thing, yeah. which is just like, no, it's not. Yeah, it's a, it's. I think it's been a slow-moving coup of Atlantis again yeah. all over. Like Atlantis was in the middle of a war when this major catac series of major cataclysms took place, and they lost their technology. They had to kind of start from scratch, but those people had the knowledge, and and over time have been rebuilding their empire back to the point where they can finish the war that they started against itself or against the Lemurian uh, or the, the Lemurian culture or the, what's the other word? The Rama empire, as it would be called. That was like Ram or Ramatha, the, the being basically uh, opposing the Atlantean power structure that had what that, was originally part of Lemuria, but kind of separated and became Which a Which is really out. funny because, and not to just cut you off, but I really want to highlight this. I've been hearing things that, um, that Africa, of course, you know, Egypt's in Africa, that Africa is actually the 12 tribes of Israel. 
and that um, so you know the there are different ty different types of black, which I don't want that term, but you know there's different different tribes, and um, though the tri twelve tribes of Israel came from you know and even Syria, right? Syria. Yeah, that's it's right right above uh, Israel. Right. But that if you look at the map, that actually continent, the part of Syria and all of that actually could have been connected. Yeah. And anyway, my point is that um, I've heard like Atlantis, what's that new movie with all, um, Aquaman. No, not that one, but that one I do want to talk about. Um, the black one, I can't even know one. Black Panther. Black Panther. So Black Panther, I've heard Black Panther was actually Atlantis. Yeah. Well, that again, back to Africa, because have you, the, the, you've heard of the Rakat or the Rashat structure in Africa, the Eye of Africa. Mm -hmm. And if you look oh, at- Oh yeah, Sahara. Yeah, and the Sahara, uh, people assume based on the story of mythology that Atlantis is under the ocean. And in and and a lot of places it is. Uh, because it was a worldwide culture, Lemuria, there was this, a lot of stuff is now underwater because of the end of the ice age and the rising sea levels, all that stuff, the flood, all that. But the thing is, if you look at Africa, the entire Sahara desert, it just, it, it's just a big desert, right? Where 10,000, 14,000 years ago used to be a lush savanna with lakes and rivers and islands. And there was just a lot more like the Mediterranean kind of came up through and the Nile, that whole area was just a, a jungle. Now it's a desert. What happened? There was a lot of the, the culture was just wiped away from climate change, from earth changes, from World ancient war. And wars, which I was just about to say, a nuclear war was going on back then. That's what the Bhagavad Gita in India was all about, talking about these wars between the different gods or deities or characters, whatever, how, uh, which have you. But the survivors of that culture just basically separated and went and started these or, or became the legacy of what became Egypt, what became Mesopotamia, what became... Uh, the Druids in, in uh, the Celtics up in like the British Isles area. Yeah, Those... or could have even spawned the Syrian king. Yes, 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 exactly. All the, all the nation states and the kings from the antiquity that you would read about in a traditional history book, those were the, the legacy survivors of this lost culture, which was at war with itself. Uh, and so, and the thing is, is that Egypt gets... The leg, like people attribute Greece, uh, ancient Greece as this great place of philosophical development. But in reality, they basically just stole everything from Egypt. Egypt had this, yeah. Egypt was like- one of those like, telephone down things. Exactly, a very, like the, one of the most fundamental early versions of the first pass of the telephone. Was Which again Egypt is Greece. why I don't like, I don't like the Greek New Testament. No, it's exactly. It's like, and you know what, Plato, there, there, it's like, there were, it's like not to say all of Greece in generalized, there were good aspects. A perfect example of that is you got the Athens culture, which was very philosophical and ed academic, but then you had Sparta, which is all about war. So it's like, you, you, the thing is, is that Greece inherited, that's a very loose and understated term. They stole what was going on in Egypt, uh, even the Vatican, the Vatican stole what was going on in Egypt, the Roman Empire. Everybody stole what was going and slandered what was going on in Egypt, where now people think that slaves built the pyramids, uh, the Egyptians were a bunch of heathens. And yeah, they believe that the Israelites built the pyramids and that the Egyptians were like these horrific slave drivers. And it was kind of the, op it's, it was more complicated than that. I wouldn't it's say exactly. It's more that. complicated. You cannot look at it like that. And that's why I really am excited. I'm telling you. In like in the, over the next three months, we're going to go through Gods of Eden and the Hebrew Bible, and we're we're not going to talk about the New Testament right now. Um, that's a whole nother, whole nother. It's a whole nother gamut that's been widened. 
Yeah, I really think it's important because you know a lot of, I don't, well, I won't say that, I won't put this on you, but. Because <laughs> I don't know, I don't really know anything. <laughs> I know, I just, <laughs> no, I'm going to interrupt. You have shared with me the re research you've done and you've done the Egyptian side so much. And I feel like I'm coming at it from the Hebrew side and we need to like, we need to reconcile this. Yeah, because they're, they're, if we want to look at it even further to Atlantis at war with itself, like I had said before, even Ar Aramaic or, or Sanskrit, for that matter, Sanskrit and Hebrew, Arabs and the Jews, the conflict of the ages, those two languages are very similar to each other in the type of lang the, the written language form. And they, they, they come from a root language. They come, they're, they're like brothers that have a common like ancestor. Like Ishmael Isaac. Yes, and like Enki and Enlil with Anu, the whole thing. It's yeah. like everywhere you look, you're going to see this. Wow. Hey, where's the, the, the top of the, let's, let's follow these two sides instead of fighting which side, which side, which side. It's like, no, no, no. What's the common part? Put the Venn diagram together. What's the common part there? So, yeah, we're going we're gonna to bring those, those tales of history into a context with lexicon, movies, our own personal research, the things we know, the things we don't know. The thing, which is more important, the questions that arise from all of this stuff, we're going we're gonna to do a whole episode or a series of episodes for that matter on this subject, because if we don't remember where we come from or who we really are, then like, we're, it's like, we, then how are we expect it to move forward? Yeah. It's like, we're going to keep repeating the same thing. We have to get back to the original story first. What's the, what's the start point of this epic which it's an epic. It's not the start point of all of things because there was stuff before that and stuff before that. And I know, which there. actually takes us to um, Mandala. We really also need to research this whole, I don't even want to call it myth because I think that makes it sound so fake. We need to research this stuff we're hearing about Lilith and Adam at the beginning of creation in the Garden of Eden. It is so crucial we cannot bypass it. We cannot ignore it. In fact, if we really truly want to get over this entire crazy thing that we're going on, the crux of it starts in the Garden of Eden with Lilith and Adam. Yeah, that's where the real, like the story per se begins. Uh, I, I think that's extremely important to do a discourse on, especially because it relates so much to what's going on right now. Uh, like we were saying before, this the, the 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 war of Atlantis, all this stuff which transpired is what is going on right now. We're reaching that point again. We're at the it's like at the exact same point on the spiral, and we have this opportunity to learn and to evolve and not to repeat the same things over and over again. It's there's a great line from a Lupe Fiasco song. I forgot the rest of the part at this point, but yeah. it's going through it, but it's not to relive them, just to remind us. Yeah. That's really important. It's like this whole thing is not an accident. It's not just here to punish us for our, we're living in a hell of our own history. No, it's here for a reason to remind us of what's going on so that we can learn. And that's, that's the nature of creation itself is that there's a purpose to this dark age so that we can we can come to the realization in our own context I, I like i bring this up I, I this is going to be a big part of my lecture that i want to explain more and maybe following episodes but we always talk about past lives and reincarnation or i was so and so in a past life or ah this person from you know uh, resonate with anki or resonate with Sekhmet or whatever it is. it's like yeah that's that's good to help us understand to a point but the big question is this in the future no one's going to remember all that. Let's just say, let's pretend no one remembers all that stuff. Just like now people think Atlantis was a lost culture. What if we're that lost culture? Who's going to be the reincarnation of Kara in the future? What, what are you doing now that is defining the future generations? I think that's something that the indigenous cultures really highlight is that the decisions we make now are affecting seven generations down the line and even further than that. So it's like cool to know about the mythology in the past and to study and oh, I resonate with this past thing. But okay, now that you know that, what, what, can, what can we do now? What, are we, what kind of seeds are we planting that are going to be the next generation? Who's going to be the reincarnation of you in the next time, lifetime? It's like, oh, I never thought about that. 
It's like, are people just going to be constantly looking to the past and defining ourselves by the past? I was so-and-so in a past life. Let's start moving in the next, like do a pull shift to be like, okay, I'm going to take command over this. I'm not going to ignore the past and be like, that's irrelevant because it's totally relevant. But we can also include ourselves in that story. I think that's like more important now than ever. Because if we're going to learn from that, we're, it's here to remind us. But we're not here to just relive this over and over again. We don't have to keep taking the class over and over again. The thing is, is we need to redefine who we are. We have this opportunity to redefine ourselves. Is this a story that defines us now? Maybe parts of it does, maybe it doesn't. It's like when you write a draft of a script and after many years, it's like, okay, well, we got to write a new draft and there's certain parts that work in the new framework, but then there's other parts that we can just like, let's, let, let's get rid of that. It's okay. It served us to this point, but let's put some new stuff in there. I think that's a, a good framework for an opera, like an operating system for the, for the new paradigm. Crucial. So crucial. And I just love how you mentioned and emphasized seven generations because it's not just seven generations. I like to think of it as 42 generations. We really are stewards of this planet. We are not, you know, we are renting it from our grandchildren. And if you, mm -hmm. and truly, I know it's so important to think like that because that is literally how I've been thinking for the past three or four years. It's literally on my website. I, I thought, I talked about this for so long. We need to think about 100,000 years from now, where is planet Earth and what is it doing and how is it helping humanity? And, you know, even though on the last three years I've been thinking about all of this, literally for the last probably, mm, I would say, last year, the last year, since I truly have completely dedicated myself to the Prime Creator, the last year, the Prime Creator has been making me focus on this because the Prime Creator said, I cannot adjust where the Earth is 100 years from now unless I know why the, the shit we're in, that we're in. And so I think it's paramount that, you know, you allow yourself to be whichever space it is, whether you're thinking about the future or you're thinking about the past, don't pass, don't forget that they're, that we're here right now and that it's important to choose right now that we're, we remain in love. And so, yeah, I totally agree with you. I totally like thumbs up that. And I just, I know what that's like because I think that's what A2K really means. A2K, look at how it's the only numeral in the meat is in the middle. And it's like this, continuity between yourself and the prime creator yes you have access to the past yes you have knowledge of the future yes but right now like let's stay in, in this continuity between yourself and the prime creator because i mean i don't know anything <laughs> i literally can't even beat my own heart and so the only thing that really does matter is like where are you right now with the prime creator where are you right now with the prime creator where are you right now with the prime creator and I think that that, you said that exact same thing. So I just, um, I give it a big thumbs up. Yeah, we can, we can, we can do a lot more than we think. We can hold the past and the future at the same time and be one with all that. We can, we can, and, and once we reconcile the fact, it's not about cut which hand you want, we'll cut the other one off. No. Yeah. <laughs> okay, excuse me. This is not barbarian, uh, what's it called? Uh, Hammurabi's code over here. It's not eye for an eye anymore. Not in that respect. I mean, it helped us a couple thousand years ago, but we can, we can keep both of our eyes. And in fact, remember that we have a third eye in there that helps bridge the gap between all this stuff. It's the love, it's the unity, it's the oneness, it's the light. I think, you know. Yeshua even talks about this. He said, that, you know, keep uh, your eye. Oh, yeah, let you know. thine eye be single and yeah. the, you know, all that. I, yeah. And, talking and, about your third eye, you've got to keep your eye single with the prime creator. It doesn't matter. There is no right or wrong. You know, Rumi talks about this. I'll meet you beyond in the field, beyond right and wrong. There is no right and wrong. Okay. Everyone must just connect with their own connection to the prime creator and then move from there which is 
exactly what we're talking about. And it's not, you know, yes, do we need to learn the past? Yeah, we do. We really, really, really do. Because if we're going to affect the future, we have to know what our ancestors have done. Yep. And yes, are we going to choose an amazing future for 100,000 years? Yes, we are. I really want everyone to actively say, I do not want the uh, universe to end tomorrow. Let's work towards it being here for 100 years for our, our future generations. And then do what you need to do in that moment that Prime Creator tells you. I mean, truly, it's like, yeah. it's so simple. It's so simple, and, and, and awareness is the key to that. It, it object, it, the objective nature of reality exists in our in our minds as well as the subjective nature of our experience and our our hearts or our feelings. We we right and wrong exists in a personal way. Like we, we, no one judges you except for yourself. We're, and it's okay. Like it's good yeah, to have a prime creator doesn't even judge us. No, exactly. It's good. <laughs> it's good to have that morality compass that comes from making decisions and experiencing the consequences of those decisions, and then being honest with yourself about that. That's that's the subjective compass that you we need to get straight. And that's and there's no like one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. My version of right might be the other person's version of wrong, and vice versa. That's you'll never we'll never find a a true north in that sense. No, but, but I think the golden rule does apply, right? Right, and the golden rule is like yeah. the objective quality of things. That's what the creator's all about. It's that there is yeah. no right and wrong in that sense. It's that there is there is only creation. And, and it is our obligation or our duty, or our rite of passage to find a middle ground amidst all of that stuff. It's like, we need, it's like, it's all about becoming, it, it, like back to what you were saying before, it's really simple. It's about learning how to be in balance with yourself and with the world around you. The inner and the outer, it's not a choice between which one, it's not right or wrong, it's about being in balance. It's about being in balance, right and wrong, good and evil. That's like a slandered version of what it means to be in balance. And it's, it's, it's a really easy thing because you could just ask yourself these questions. If you take a step back and you ask, you shall receive. You might not receive it in the way you want to receive it, but if you remain open and curious, you will get answers. Might be not in that moment, but you gotta be open and curious. And it's like, you gotta ask, there is a purpose. And if we're present, we will receive it, plain and simple. Yeah, and I think it does, you know, there are a couple of things that I do love about the New Testament. And one of them is the only prayer that Yeshua, according to the New Testament, and I would put that very emphatically, according to the New Te the Greek New Testament, um, you know, it, it, the only prayer he ever taught, one of the lines was, and as he was talking to the prime creator, he was saying, your, um, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I think that is so crucial because I think that there is definitely um, individuals who want to see their own will happen. And prime creator will, I mean, it's kind of exciting, I think. I don't even know why anyone would want to oppose that. But I think that that juxtaposed to what you just said are really the crux of all the New Testament, which goes back to judge lest, judge not lest you be judged. And that's, you know, and that again is something I think what YouTube is teaching us. Look at all these individuals who, yeah, they may be deemed hate and they may be telling truth and they're getting so upset that YouTube is canceling them. But guess what? They're judging. <laughs> like, don't even talk about these other channels. Don't even talk about LGBTQ. Don't even talk about, you know, whether there's gender or whether there's sexes or, you know, whether there's elites or Illuminati or this, that, and the other. It's like, really, are they so excited? Are, you, you don't have anything so exciting to talk about that you have to talk about this. Yeah. You know, something that also I've noticed we have not done in this show is we're not pointing fingers at any thing, person, being, force, outside of you know we're not point being like that over there is wrong or this is that we're we're, in, we're we're doing our best to stay in a perpetual state of questioning 
i.e. we don't know anything. We don't know anything. We can, but we, but we, but we do strive to know ourselves and that's okay because we're not pointing out being like, no, that, no, you should know about that over there. You don't know about that over there. It's like, no, or this whole, all of the things that we're discussing are coming, are, are emerging from this, from this own, our own personal journey is of trying to know ourselves, trying to know the, the, the meaning within, because all the answers lie within. There's a perfectly good blueprint within ourselves to understand how to be in this world and what we should or should not do is part of the experiences of being on that journey. So I think that it's really cool. Like for all, if you're going to go out there and make a YouTube channel and, and do all these things, it's like, great, do some exploration, but it, it's like, do we need to be pointing fingers at what it's like commentary on what other people are doing or what they should not be doing? It's, it's like the, we've just, the things have come up and our, we have our own opinions about stuff and that's okay, but we're, we're not, it's not our goal here to disprove or prove what other people are should or should not do. We're here to question. We're here to have, just to open the gateway to have access to knowledge. That's what A2K represents. It's just like, here is a gateway. We're going through this gateway. We're back at the gateway. It's always coming back. It's we're in a perpetual, like we're going through this vortex. We're in a monolith. We're in this portal, so to speak. And we're, we're just asking questions. And it's like, when you ask questions, more questions will come up. Will we get an answer? I don't know. Maybe it's like, maybe there is no objective answer to the truth. It's like, what was that movie? The uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy when they wanted the answer to the universe. They're like, the answer is 42. I think it was 42, actually. It's 42, so, it's 42, it's 42. Yeah, it's like, and you know, and they were so let down by the, and the 42, that's the answer to everything. Yeah, like, what does like, that even mean? Exactly. And it's like, ironically, that means a lot, but it's like, th there might not be an objective truth to the, or answer to the question, but, but, but to be in that that state of wonder and mystery of and questioning and and constantly going within for the answer, breaking the fourth wall of your own consciousness and looking within, that's where the the real wisdom comes in. I'd rather have wisdom than to have an answer because wisdom is not something that you can just give to somebody else. Wisdom is something that's personal that you have to discover on your own. And even when you go out and tell somebody else, it comes out as knowledge. It's, it's, you'll, you'll never be able to give somebody else wisdom. And I think that's an important thing about A2K is we're just holding a space and having a discussion to just exp express this, express this fact. And we don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. We know nothing. And maybe that is what is the access to knowledge. Because look at what historically happens when people are ego. They block themselves off. They think they know everything. And then they're not even open to there being a possibility of a greater truth. And so if you really come from this state of, I, I, I literally know nothing. I cannot even beat my own heart. That's when you actually get the access to all of the knowledge. It's not about you trying. And it's so funny because. According to the New, the Old Testament, and this is exactly why I want to look back at Lilith and Adam, um, just in some of the things that I have researched, um, the thing that actually uh, tripped humanity up was not knowledge itself, but this I idea that they had to be something more than themselves. And so isn't that what the ego is when you like think that you have to be more than yourself and you're not as you are, the being that you are not great. Yeah. And so truly when you do realize that the being that you are is, is amazing and a handiwork of the prime creator, then like it's kind of okay and cool to not know anything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that made me think of a, a practical, maybe a practical example of that in terms of television production where when you watch something that's live like the, the late show is live right now you're not actually watching it live you are but it's actually five to ten seconds delayed and there's a reason for that because if something goes wrong or something is you know god forbid somebody curses on live tv they have that little wiggle room in the back editing room to fix it real quickly before it goes live. 
So it's like we're in in, a, in an extension. It's like we're, we're our, the ego is like the part of our lives. It's like we're live. It's like this is who I am. This is live right now, but it's not. It's just it's a little bit delayed. It's kind of the 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 extrapolation of who we really are. It's not who we are. It's not really live. It just seems live, and so we're constantly having this play back and forth with our ego. Is that who we are? Oh, it's not. And then we get to correct ourselves. That's that little wiggle room that they have in the live television production where they can be like, Oh, we screwed up. We got to fix that real quick. And that's like the higher self coming in and that, the super conscious being like, no, 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 that you didn't mean to say that you should have said this. So it's, it's, it's amazing that we're, we're living. It's again, back to the thing. We're living in a sort of simulation of of the of the true creation where no matter what we really do it's not gonna it's not gonna affect things on the on the fundamental level which i think gives more of a credence to why there's no evil in the world evil doesn't really exist because if evil existed then creation would be destroyed but creation is not destroyed creation's in a perpetual state of creation so it's like i don't know it's just it's a real it's really interesting to be in this experience to be live and to have that opportunity to also be in the control room to change things at the same time. Yeah, and with that, we must close, subscribers. I'm sure you could hear us all day long. In fact, wouldn't it be cool, Alex, one day we'll do a marathon session. Yeah, we could do like a six-hour Alex Jones, Joe Rogan experience live on, on the air and yeah. take some questions and bring some guest panelists on and – well, the thing is, I guarantee, I mean, I literally re listen to our conversations because there's so much that happens that I don't, I like, I'm speaking, but I, it's, you know, it's kind of like how what the voice talks about. You have this, um, this vocal box, but then you yourself are just the observer. And so, as such, you know, when I listen to these repetitively, I learn so much. And I'm, I'm sure our, subscribers are really enjoying me so yeah in the future we're going to do a marathon session we'll let you guys know when it's going to happen that sounds great well thank you so much Kara. it's a pleasure to be here discussing these wonderful things and just to not know anything together know that we don't really know much it's a really comforting thing so it's been it's been a great it's been a great show and we'll have this uh we'll have this it's not live but it won't be live it will be live for you watching it right now but it's technically we're in the past so you know it's a vortex well, one thing that i <laughs> one, the last thing i want to close with and that's something i heard as you were talking so I will credit it to this A2K super awesome energy. And this is what I heard Prime Creator say to us. The speed of light is slower than the speed of the Prime Creator. Yeah. That says it all right there. I love it. Because that's what you're saying, right? This little like yeah. play that we have between the ego and that source. Of course, the the speed of light is, you know, it's it's but a telephone game of the speed of the prime creator that we really are. Yeah, creation is truly infinite and present, omnipresent. That's what the creator really is. Uh, we are just the mere gods within the creation that are not. We're going at the speed of light, but there is something much faster than that. It's, it's beyond fast. It can't go faster than yeah. creation. Creation just is. So it's, it's good. It's good. Okay, Alex. Well, next week we'll have another one. All right. Sounds good, Kara. We'll see you next time. Everybody, thanks for tuning in. Remember to like and subscribe and hit the bell at the bottom. Check the description for the thing and put your comments below. We'll We'll get to them in a timely fashion. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Karen.